football from Cougar Stadium, Brigham Young University against the University of Texas. Last week, the Cougars from BYU suffering a disappointing loss on the road to the University of Wyoming, so they did not get off to a good start. That's kind of been traditional the, uh, under Lavelle Edwards. The Cougar teams have struggled a little at the start of the year. Texas, on the other hand, Blaine, down through the years, I think they've won about 85, lost only 11 in first games, but the last two years they've lost their opener. And I, I think... I think it's harder. There's a series record between Texas and BYU. You can see there, they've only played once last year. Uh, BYU coming out on top, so it's 1-0, and Texas has a score to settle. And, and back to what you said, Jay, I think it's harder for a passing team to get in gear uh, because such the sophistication of running the routes and all that it takes to put that together, I think that's why traditionally BYU's been slow. It's easier to put a running game together. Of course, that doesn't explain what Texas has done the last two years. <laughs> but uh, Well, they, they lost their home opener last year, or their uh, opener, I think, to Auburn. Then their home opener last year was with Brigham Young University, and they lost that one. And needless to say, the Longhorn fans didn't take too kindly to that. And I've been told that all year long, there's been talk, there's been the uh, messages on the, the uh, uh, you know, the uh, ch chalkboards and all in the dressing rooms, remembering that BYU game. They've pointed towards this game. They want to get even. They, you know, they, they run up for a walk by the locker room, and they're ready to go. They're very serious. Very excited about this game. They want to get even for last year. The Cougars will kick off. Remember, Eric Metcalf is not here for Texas. He would be back deep. He was a threat every time he got his hands on the football. He will not play in this game. Kaufman, a Texas player, a freshman from BYU, kicking off and drives it along the ground. It's field of the 15 to the 20, up to the 25, knocked off his feet at the 29-yard line by Rocky Beagle from BYU. There's another freshman name that you uh, should put in your notebook and remember. He's from Wisconsin, and he's going to be a great one. There you see the starting offense for the University of Texas. Thomas, Soleil, and the others along the offensive line. Their quarterback is Shannon Kelly. So we're about ready to go with the ball game. Shannon Kelly, here's the first play. Sweep to the left side, knocked out of bounds up near the 34-yard line. That's Wilson, the ball carrier, number 39, Patrick Wilson. He replaced Eric Metcalf. He was number two. He's a redshirt freshman. There's the starting defense, defense for Brigham Young University in the game. It was Bob Davis, the Cougar linebacker, who's a very good football player, only a junior from Mesa, who made the stop. So we've had the first offensive play of the game. It was an eight-yard game, second and two for Texas on their own 37-yard line. Going to throw this time. Throws out of the flat, and it is complete at the 45-yard line and down to the 46-yard line. Eric Bergeson covering for BYU. The pass complete to Johnny Walker, the flanker back. I talked to uh, Reagan Hansen before the game, Jay, to see what the BYU expected out of the offense from Texas. And BYU really thought that, uh, and here you're going to see that they're going to throw the ball to the left. Just ran a quick out, just a timing route, a three-step drop by the quarterback. Almost impossible to stop if you've got quick receivers, Jay. And that's the variety of pass we're going to see from Texas tonight. That's one thing that Texas is blessed with on both sides of the ball. The uh, offensive defense have great speed. It's a delayed handoff this time to Wilson going wide to the left side. Trapped at the line of scrimmage. Still gains maybe three yards. Knocked out of bounds again by Bob Davis leading the way for BYU. Let's see, Wilson 6'1", 198, a freshman from Odessa, Texas. And I wouldn't be surprised to see him have a great game tonight, Jay, because that tailback position with the big horses that Texas has up front, he's going to get the ball a lot. And I've heard nothing but good things about Patrick Wilson, so look for him to have a good game. Even though he's, he's new and he's a rookie, he's got a lot of talent. Blaine, he's a sprinter on their track team. And last year as a redshirt, they trained him at both linebacker and defensive end. And then in the spring, moved him to a running back. So he must be a very talented athlete. Second down, about seven. Kelly looking out of the flat. That's Jones, their sprinter. He's to the 50. And down the sidelines, knocked out of bounds at the 40-yard line. Tony Jones, Peterson over there, Rice there for BYU. Bob Davis also into the stop. It's a first down play for Texas, and they're in BYU territory. Here's some comparisons this year. There are only four seniors in the Texas team, six of the BYU team. Underclassmen, six for Texas, one for BYU. That's the uh, uh, matching up between offense and defense. The football has been moved to the Brigham Young University 40-yard line, where it's a first and 10 for the Texas Longhorns. First offensive series of the football game. Kelly at quarterback. That's a pitch back to Wilson. Hit behind the line of scrimmage and dropped this time by Clark. Bigger defensive end. That's Tim Clark for BYU. Clark, the senior from Salt Lake City. 
Here's a young man who was an all-whack academic player last year. In fact, he has uh, a double major. He's already graduated. He's working on another one now. On this particular play, Clark just took an inside charge on his man, slanted the inside, and went right to the ball. He's a smart player, Jay, as you mentioned, an academic uh, performer as well as on the field, and uh, an outstanding defensive end for the Cougars. Senior, he started some last year for BYU. Second down, they lost two, make it 12. They send uh, Wilson in motion this time. That's a delayed handoff. He slips it one tackle and then is down. They faked a pass that time, tried to get it in the hands of Norris, sort of reaching ahead with a handoff, and they dropped him. Pete uh, Harston for Brigham Young University led the charge. That particular play, Jay, they tried, they called a sprint draw, where the quarterback fakes like he's sprinting out. That's tough to handle the ball on that. He had to reach around the back and put it in the other way. Uh, BYU had too much pressure and too much penetration for that to work at all. Harston, defensive tackle, is starting in this game. Craig Patterson broke his hand last week against Wyoming. They didn't know if he'd be able to play today. And so we can see at least starting, it was Pete Harston, who's a sophomore from Littleton, Colorado. Right now, the Longhorns have third and 14. And the BYU crowd wakes up here. They're going to help out, help out a bit. Here's a pass right over the middle, and it is. He caught it. Great catch down at the 27-yard line. Rodney Rice covering for BYU, and it was Jones who grabbed it. Nice catch. A correction. That's Johnny Walker who got it. On the replay, we're going to see Johnny Walker just runs a quick slant, another pattern that's really tough to cover when you have a quick receiver. It's all time. He splits the zone between the corner and the free safety, and uh, quarterback delivered the ball on time and right there. Took a good hit from uh, Rice, who tried to knock the ball free, but he hung on to it. It's a first down, Texas, on the BYU 26-yard line. There's a pitch back. It's fumbled. It's free. It's picked up by Texas, and they'll smear him at the 35-yard line. Patrick Wilson dropped the uh, pitch back, and Troy Long came shooting through for BYU, along with several other Cougars, and there'll be a loss on the play. What's going to make this play go is that Troy Long was up from his safety position blitzing that time. Came up real quick, and uh, that's the kind of mistakes that a, a young player will make. Looking to run, not looking to catch the pitch. He dropped the ball, and Troy Long was there to make the play. Number nine in the stop was Chad Robinson for BYU from Highland, Utah, starting at the uh, weak side linebacker position. Second down, and a loss of some eight yards on that one. Make it second and 18. Pass play. Sprinting to the right, looking under pressure, throws... Incomplete. Rodney Rice covering on Walker that time and was able to uh, keep him from getting to the football. Some great coverage by Rodney Rice that time. Walker is a, uh, there's the officials we have for the game you can see. Walker has outstanding speed as well as Jones. Both receivers have outstanding speed. And Walker faked like he was running a deep route on Rodney Rice. Rodney Rice still had the quickness to break uh, back to the ball when Walker came back to the ball on a curl route. Rice, 5'8", senior from Atwater, California, transferred to BYU from Merced Junior College, and he's a fine football player. Third down and 18 for the Longhorns. Wilson goes in motion. Kelly back to throw. Dropping way back, way back, way back. Now being chased, gets it off. Downfield, and it's incomplete. In fact, there was no one there when the uh, ball came down. Covering for BYU was long, and downfield was, uh, was number 40. That's uh, Jurek Battle, who plays that flex end position, but there's also a flag down. You know, Texas receivers made a big mistake on that play, Jay. Whenever your quarterback gets in trouble and he starts to scramble around, the receivers have to move. They have to come off of the routes and move the direction that the quarterback is moving. That time, the quarterback got in trouble and he started to scramble, and all the Texas receivers just stood still. Well, it's easy to cover them when they're standing still, and obviously didn't have anybody to throw to and had to throw it away. There was a good matchup downfield between Long and Battle. They were battling. In a, or, uh, yeah, I think it's ineligible receiver downfield. Cougars will refuse the penalty, so the Longhorns have third and 18 on the Brigham Young 34-yard line. Or fourth and 18, make that. And they're sending out a punting unit or field goal, which? That'd be a long field goal, but it looks like that's what we're going to try. Their field goal kicker is Wayne Clements, a junior from Dallas. His long kick is 52 yards. He'll be trying it from the 41, so that's a 51-yard attempt. Uh, again, last year, twice, he did kick 52-yard field goals as he hit 16 out of 22. He's a left-footed kicker. It's fumbled. He picks it up himself and is dropped right away, and they don't even get the kick away as Bob Davis is on top of him. So the Brigham Young University defense wakes up the crowd. They play very, very well in this first uh, offensive series. 
You remember last year, Jay, in the, in the BYU-Texas game, the thing that really hurt Texas is they had a lot of turnovers. I believe it was eight turnovers, four fumbles and four interceptions. That's right. And starting right off here in their first drive, they had two fumbles. Now, they, weren't, they didn't lose those fumbles, but it, it uh, ruined the drive. That, it was, uh, it was a good snap. You could see on the, on the replay, it was a good snap. It just went right through the holder's hands, and, and the kicker had no chance at that point. Delay of game has been called, so that uh, we, we now have a timeout on the field, too. Is that correct? No, it's a dead ball foul, dead Jay. Ball foul. And All so right. they'll get to kick it again or punt it or what? They'll probably punt now. That's probably out of his range. A dead ball foul. They should have they blown that dead before anything happened. Okay, it was delay of game, so uh, the play was actually stopped before the snap. It's a five-yard walk-off against the Longhorns, which puts it back to the 39 and makes it fourth and about 23, maybe 24 yards for a first down. That might explain why the holder dropped a perfectly good snap. He may have heard the whistle and lost his concentra concentration there. The punter is Alex Waits. In his third year, he's a barefoot, left-footed kicker. He will be kicking from his own 46-yard line. The snap. Cougars had the rush on. They almost got to it. The kick will go into the end. Yeah, it does bounce into the end zone. So there's quite a difference on that. BYU will take over on the 20-yard line instead of out near the 45-yard line. Usually a penalty doesn't help you, but uh, that time it was a, a blessing for Texas. Waits, by the way, was the second-best punter in the Southwest Conference last year, uh, averaging 43.6 yards per punt, and his coaches say he's an excellent position punter. You know, last year he punted without a shoe on, and I just noticed that he had a shoe on this you time. Did he have it on this time? Yeah, I wonder if he, he must have changed this year or decided that up in Utah it might be a little colder and brought a shoe along. Well, they still list him in the guide and all as being a barefoot kicker. Yeah. Brigham Young with the football. Covey at quarterback. First and ten from the 20. First play, he's got the football. Fakes in the end around. He's going to throw. Does throw downfield. He's got a man there. It's caught. He's wide open to the 20, to the 10. And it's a touchdown, Brigham Young University. And it was caught by Bryce Doman, who's the freshman from Skyline High School in Salt Lake City. What a great play to start that? out with, Jay. They completely had Texas' the secondary fooled. Covey came out and he faked the handoff to the left. That started again. He faked the reverse. We're going to see on the replay here. We just got the end of it. What happened was he faked into the left side of the line and then faked a reverse to the flanker. Everyone in the secondary came up to make the tackle. Doman was going on a post pattern. Didn't have anybody within 20 yards of him. He's got the great speed to take it into the end zone from there. We've been told just before the game started that Doman would start in that position. And man alive, what a way to start the season for Brigham Young University. Here's Earl Kaufman to try the extra point. Thompson holding. The kick is up there, and it's good. And Brigham Young University scores in one play. And with 11.30 to go in the first quarter of the football game, the Cougars from Brigham Young have seven. And the Longhorns from the University of Texas, nothing. Brigham Young University has jumped away to a 7-0 lead on one play, an 80-yard pass play from Sean Covey to Bryce Doman, the freshman from Salt Lake City. Good play action faking by uh, Covey to set the play up. And Blaine, you say you watched one of the Longhorn defenders fell down. They were so confused back there, they didn't know what they were doing, Jay. They each took about a step forward when he faked the first fake into the left side of the line. When he faked the reverse, they all went for the reverse and left him wide open. Bryce Dome just streaking down the middle. Cougar team out there pumping the crowd up right now as Earl Kaufman will kick off for Brigham Young University. Kaufman is the freshman from Universal City, Texas, and he's blessed with an exceptionally strong leg. Here's the kick. Drives it way back there. Last time he bounced along the ground, and they were playing up a bit, but this time he kicked it over everybody's head and out of the end zone. So it's a touchback. We'll come out to the 20-yard line. I think we mentioned, but remember last year, BYU scored on the offensive play and the first play of the game from Jensen to... Can't remember who was. Was it Dave Miles? Or... No, it wasn't Miles. That's right, Tezaeus. Yeah, Rich Tezaeus. It was Tezaeus. On the right first play the from scrimmage. Line. There's a scoring drive. She's 11 seconds. That's a quick scoring drive. One play. First and 10 from the 20 for the University of Texas. Back to throw. Does throw out on the flat. Completes it. Up to the 30 to the 32-yard line. Knocked out of bounds at that point. Completing it to Tony Jones. You know, they like to throw that kind of pass, Jay. Their quarterback has a real strong arm. He can get it out to the sideline like that. They like to get it to their wideouts with their great speed because they can make thing hap things happen. Eric Ferguson and Chad Robinson stopping him. 
You can see that the Cougars are 11-3 against teams from Texas since 1980, so they've had very good luck down in the, the Lone Star State. Well, Texas has lost only twice, I think, to WAC teams the last two times they've played them, Air Force and BYU. First down, Texas, 32-yard line, right up the middle, off the left side, spins over the 36, to the 36. That's the first up-the-middle play we've seen uh, from Norris. And uh, as I talked, I was talking earlier, I talked to Reagan Hansen beginning of the game. He thought that they'd see a lot more of that today. Texas feels they're big and physical on the inside, and uh, they feel like they can blow him off the ball and run Norris up the middle quite a bit today with the absence of Metcalf. Bob Davis stopped him. Norris, 5'9", 202, a senior. All-conference candidate this year for the Longhorns. Second and seven for Texas. Sprinting out, looking to throw. Does throw, and it is caught, but he's out of bounds. Out of bounds that time. Walker coming up to meet the football, but he'd been driven out of bounds. Rodney Rice covering for BYU. It'll be third and seven. Rodney Rice really looking confident back there today, Jay. Uh, he's not giving the wide receiver much cushion. He's playing him real tight, and he's been right on him every time. And then Troy Long over there to help out as well from his safety position. Just a quick roll, and the receiver's going to run like he's running a streak down the sideline and cut back to the sidelines. And you're going to see as he comes in your picture, Rodney Rice is right there. Third and seven for Texas. They're on their own 36-yard line. BYU leading 7-0. Kelly back to throw. Straight back this time. Everybody covered. Flips it over the middle. It's caught at the 39-yard line. That will not be enough for the first down. As BYU had it well covered, Pat Wilson made the catch, and Robinson and Davis tackled him. BYU secondary and linebackers doing a good job of getting back into their zones. They played a zone back there on coverage, covered all the deep receivers, and, and let that guy get open a little bit underneath. But that's what you want to do. Take away the deep stuff and give him the short stuff on third and long. Here's and, the punting. Uh, Excuse me. Excellent job. The punting team, Alex Waits, we saw the play again, as they had it covered well deep. For Brigham Young University, you've got, uh, you've got Salito back deep. Here's the punt. Booms it very high. Down to the 13-yard line. No, it's not. Uh, it's taken there and dropped at the 10-yard line right away. So BYU will take over on their own 10-yard line. There's also a flag. Well, there was a great hit. It was Jaquist who made the tackle. An initial block there right at the beginning there when O'Brien first started to the right. Somebody back on the left side made a real great hit. I couldn't see who it was. I thought it was Courtney Rogers. BYU ahead 7 0. They'll be deep in their own territory now. When they get the football, the officials talking things over. We're waiting for the call. We have uh, just under 10 minutes left to go in the first quarter. Next week, next uh, week from Saturday. Brigham Young University plays a league game here in Provo. The University of Texas at El Paso. And that should be a good ball game. UTEP's going to be tough again this year. They've got the great back back. It's Haggerty. No, Haggerty Haggerty's the quarterback. the quarterback. Harvey. Harvey. Kid from upstate New York that uh, really had an outstanding year last year. He's a great back. Well, the officials are over talking to the BYU uh, team right now. It's a clip. It's like it's on Texas. And make him punt it again. Well, BYU scored just a moment ago on that uh, pass to Doman from Covey. And now we have a penalty on Texas on the punt. Clicking for the zipping it, they'll kick it again. by the offense during the Develop. kick. 15 yard penalty. Pella, still the, fourth uh, down. Coaches. So it's still fourth down, but it drives him back away. Cougars opening the season with a Thursday night game against Wyoming, a Thursday night game against uh, uh, Texas, and then they will play a week from Saturday against UTEP right here. That's O'Brien back deep to take the punch. That's an amazing story right there, Blaine. Uh, O'Brien to bounce back after that severe knee injury last year. And major, major surgery. Here's the punt. O'Brien takes it at the 33-yard line, tries to get outside, gets a block, turns the corner to the 40. And Bulls his way to the 45-yard line. He's knocked down by Stanley Richard. Good return by O'Brien. The Cougar return team really had a good uh, wall set up on the right side, and O'Brien just had to beat the first guy. Great return there. 
First quarter of the football game, Brigham Young University leading Texas, 7 to nothing, 9.45 left to go in the first quarter. The Cougars have the ball, first and 10 on their own 45-yard line. Covey at quarterback. Bellini and Whittingham are the two setbacks with him. He's out of the shotgun this time. We'll take a direct snap. Now either the uh, center, there's the direct snap back to Covey. Throws it over the middle. It's deflected at the line of scrimmage. He had a man open, too. Somebody got a big hand up there. Oscar Giles, the defensive right end. 6'3", 239, deflected the pass. Got a flag on the play, Jay. He had uh, Matt Odell cutting across the middle, and he was wide open. Penalties on the Cougars. You know, up front, uh, Blaine, there's Steve Llewellyn, 6'6", 270. Ken Hackermack, 6'9", 288. Oscar Penalty Giles. On the line of scrimmage on the offense. Penalty is declined. Second down. Okay, Giles is 6'3", 239. And Steed is 6'4", 242. That's some good size. They're, they're two inside people are monsters. Uh, B, BYU across the front, of course, is, is also huge by college standards. So it's, it'll be a battle there. They refer in their press guide to those two young men you talked about as imposing. That's true. Second and 10. Flag goes down again, and they stop the play. Covey at quarterback. You know, Covey was hurt in the game last week against Wyoming. I know one thing they did this week, they've changed the helmet he's wearing uh, to help protect him a little more. You know, he's had those, he's had three concussions in the last four games. False start, offense, still second down. Five yard penalty against the Cougars. So they have second and 15. Second and 15 on their own 39 yard line. Covey gives no fakes on the draw. He's back to throw. Does throw. Completes it. That's Doman, who caught it at the 46-yard uh, line of Texas. Mark Berry covering. Bryce Doman impressing me so far, Jay. Young guy like that. This is a good view from the back. You'll see Covey just drops back and fakes the draw. It holds linebackers a little bit and leaves those zones open a little bit in the back. Bryce Doman just ran down, straight down, and curled back toward the quarterback on the inside and was able to get open. Short of the yardage needed for the first down. Third down, less than a yard to go for BYU. They're in Texas territory, leading 7-0. Covey comes up to the line of scrimmage, does not like what he had to see, and he called timeout. And so Brigham Young is ahead by a score of 7-0 with 9-12 to go in the first quarter. Third down, less than a yard to go for Brigham Young University. They're leading 7-0, have the ball just short of the Texas 46-yard line. Covey at quarterback. You've got Whittingham and Bellini. And Hanley was in the backfield. He shifts over to the right side. They load up the line defensively. Here comes the handoff to Bellini. He stretches for the first down. And it'll be questionable if he might got the uh, I think he did. I think he got he it. He stretched out Paul Bierman, made the uh, tackle. What they did was they brought Darren Hanley, the big tight end, across and had him be the lead blocker on that. Matt Bellini just followed him up in the hole. Problem was, uh, Darren Hanley made a good block, but there was penetration from the backside inside that caught Bellini before he had a chance to turn the corner. So they'll bring the chains all the way across the field, and we'll see whether or not BYU has the first down. My calibrated eyeball says he's got it, Jay. <laughs> but they've been wrong before. I think I'll go with you this time. The length of the football. You're right. It's a first down for Brigham Young. Cougars have worked very, very hard, both in spring and in fall drills, on short yardage. You know, that's, that's a big part of the game. You, you always hear the old cliche, football's a game of inches, and it really is. If you can't make the third and ones, third and six inches, you can't play with, with the big boys. Up front, you've got Brian White, Don Buesenbach, Phil Malahi, Warren Weed, and John Hunter on the line for BYU. Out of the shotgun this time. Covey looking to throw. Sets up, throws it deep, and it is caught! Caught at the 12-yard line. And that was a nice catch by Jeff Branson. Tell you what, Jay, Texas is trying to cover BYU man-to-man -man in the secondary. And, uh, you know, the, traditionally they've done that. But I don't think they've seen too many teams that throw the ball as much as BYU does and with as much discipline. Fred Strohmeyer made the tackle. Fra Franson came in motion and just ran a post. And Texas is running all man-to-man -man defense in the secondary, so there's no free safety back there to help out the corner on Franson. Franson just beats the guy. Covey read the defense and saw that it was man-to-man -man and went deep with it. Good decision, good throw, and good catch. Franson had good position against the defensive back. First and 10 on the 11-yard line for Brigham Young. There's a pitch to Bellini. They're going to try to turn the corner to the right side. Nothing doing that time. They lose yardage. 
a sweep to the right, but they get uh, don't get anything. That's Brett Hager. You watch this guy today. Number 60. He's a senior, 230 pounder. He had 22 tackles last year against the Cougars. And he, he's an All Southwest Conference performer, an All American candidate. He's a great one. You know, he'll get the credit for that tackle, but I'll tell you what, the strong safety, uh, Paul Sherman, came up, turned the play inside. He's really the one that made the play. He didn't let it get outside. And Hager just came in and made the tackle from the inside. Hey, here's the duck. All of the linemen over to the left side. Only two men. Oh, and BYU may have blown it. A man started to move, but no flag goes down. Cubby throws it quick. Now a flag does go down, and the ball is out of bounds, and let's see what happens. Uh, is that a version of Utah's duck? I, it's a little bit different. <laughs> okay. Utah used to put a receiver out on each side with two guys in front of him. BYU put the whole line on the left side. They're going to call the motion that you saw, the elite procedure that you saw, they're going to call interesting formation. We really didn't get to see what they were going to do out of it. It looked like they tried to get single coverage on the wide receiver on the right and just throw a, a quick fade pattern to the back of the end zone. Boy, they're opening up the playbook here today. Illegal formation on the offense. Penalty is declined. Penalty, it's now third down. I'll, I'll tell you where the illegal formation could have come. It looked to me, and I questioned it when I first saw it, that the offensive line on the left side wasn't up on the ball close enough. I see. In other words, they were too far off the ball. They could have been in the backfield, so there's nobody on the line. All right, it's third and 12 for Brigham Young on the Texas 13-yard line. Cougars leading 7-0. Two setbacks, Whittingham and Bellini. Cubby calling signals. Wants to throw, does throw... Knocked around at the line of scrimmage. It's incomplete. He was trying to throw it to Franson, and Britt Hager, I think, got a hand on the football. Covey saw something on defense, evidently thought there was going to be some kind of safety blitz and man-to-man -man coverage. He went to an audible, tried to get the receiver man-to-man -man on a post into the end zone, but uh, ball knocked down, and actually there was good coverage in the secondary. You see, just going to try to hit a quick slant over the middle, but uh, the big defensive lineman gets his hand out. He actually had uh, the receiver open a little Franson. bit, but you can see just in the left of your screen where the free safety was there to help out. Here's Kaufman to try the field goal. He'll be kicking from the 21-yard line, a 31-yard attempt. He missed one last week against the University of Wyoming. He drives it up there, plenty of distance. He hit it. It is good. So Kaufman, as a college freshman, has his first collegiate field goal. And Brigham Young University has a 10-point lead. With 7.41 to go in the first uh, quarter, it's BYU 10 and uh, Texas nothing. And what do you think, Blaine? I'm very impressed. In fact, I thought that BYU was going to come out and try to run the ball a little bit more. I think they've only run the ball twice, once on that third and one, and then the one where Bellini ran to the right. They are throwing the ball very effectively, and they're keeping the pressure off the quarterback by really mixing it up. Play action passes, fake draws, these kinds of things. Uh, I think that's a, a good game plan. It's going to work today. They've got the crowd in the game right now, too. First field goal of the year for BYU. They missed three last week against the University of Wyoming. They have two pretty good kickers, Jason Chaffetz, and now this uh, Earl Kaufman, who's a freshman. Uh, Chaffetz tried two last week and missed them. Kaufman missed one, so they were 0 for 3. There's a factor in the game because the field goals, as Coach Edwards said last week, were makeable, in the makeable range. You now we talked about uh, Texas having an advantage by being able to watch BYU last week. But uh, BYU's coming out and doing a lot of things different. Last week, they were pretty much a straight drop back team against Wyoming. And, and uh, this week, they're out here to run all kinds of different things. And really, I think Texas is off balance because they didn't expect that out of you. Here's Coffin to kick off for the third time in the game. The first one bounced along the ground. The second one, he kicked clear out of the end zone. Let's see what he does this time. Here's the kick. Drives it long and hard. There'll be no return again. That landed out of the end zone. Two yards out of the back of the end zone in the air. So you've heard there. We have heard about this young man and his leg. Very, very strong kicker. He's a freshman, 195 pounder from Universal City, Texas. It's interesting, you know, Blaine, yesterday the Texas team arrived with their media, print media, broadcast media. Uh, interested, uh, we tried to set up a couple of interviews with uh, BYU Texas players and all. They never got around to it. There's his last scoring drive. There was so much talk yesterday about Metcalf that nothing else was big in Texas. Passing play, first down over the middle, and it is complete out to the 30. It's fumbled, free ball. What will it be ruled? No, it's going to be called an incomplete pass. He was juggling it, so they called him. Okay, incomplete. juggling the ball. That was Walker. He was hit by Eric Ferguson, and there's also a flag down in the backfield. All the things Texas have run so far, particularly in the passing, it was just quick breaking stuff, quick posts, slants to the middle, quick breaking outs, those kinds of things. And I think that's that's their whole game plan to get the ball off quick, get it to their receivers that have that great speed and let them do something with the ball. Here's the call. Holding on the offense. 
10 yard penalty still first down 10 yard penalty for holding on the Longhorns and uh, maybe they're suffering uh, suffering some of the problems you have in a first game they face first and 20 now from their own 10 yard line against the fired up BYU Cougar team with Brigham Young leading 10 to nothing there's the passing yardage in the game the Cougars have got him more than doubled Shannon Kelly the quarterback Kelly gives him a draw up the middle closed up right at the line of scrimmage and also a flag goes down BYU linebackers that time Bob Davis in particular doing a fantastic job uh, uh oh line let's see on BYU I think it's a face mask penalty so they had him in the hole back on the 10 yard line made a good tackle Pete Harston and Bob Davis but must have got the face mask so it's the five yard variety the inverted kind uh -huh, not the flagrant call sometimes you're, you're tackling a guy and you get your hand around his head and you don't even know you just grab whatever you can and he gets caught in the, in the face guard and, uh, I think that's what happened there first and about 15 maybe 14 yards for the first down running out of the eye Shannon Kelly the quarterback Norris the fullback Wilson the tailback he looks to throw, flips it out in the flat to Walker. He's to the 15-yard line and knocked off the feet right there. Wait a minute, a late hit will be called. Rodney Rice made the tackle, but a flag goes down, and they'll call BYU with a late hit. So the Cougars had the advantage of a penalty that set things up for them nicely defensively. This will get Texas out of the hole. I'll tell you what, they've tested Rodney Rice three or four times now, trying to get him out there man-to-man -man against that speed with uh, Walker and Jones, and uh, what a great open field tackle. Here. On the defense, automatic first down. That's an automatic first down on that penalty. So that hitting with the headgear, that spearing call that they just put in a, a few years ago, if you come in and it doesn't even have to be late, but if you uh, hit with the head only, they can call a, a spearing foul. That's what they call them. So the Longhorns have a first down on their 32-yard line instead of a first down on their 10-yard line. Brigham Young ahead, 10 to nothing in the first quarter. Kelly pitches back to his tailback, turns the corner, knocked off his feet at the 39-yard line. That's Wilson, the ball carrier. Peterson and Rice over there for the Cougars. Pretty good game by Patrick Wilson. Bob Davis did a good job of turning Wilson back in after he had made the corner. Davis turned him back in into the secondary and they were able to make the tackle. Cougars will play a league game their next game against uh, UTEP on September 17th. That's a noon kickoff time. Second down and two. Kelly will throw on what's sometimes called a free down. Juggled and dropped. It's incomplete. He overthrew uh, Walker that uh, time. A little too high. He got one hand on it. Almost got it. They're sticking with the real speed routes. Just a quick three yard out timing route. Get it out there. Um, he's going to take a three step drop and just turn and throw it on time. He gets the ball on him. They could, they could uh, have a good complete there. As I mentioned before, it's almost impossible to cover that because of the great speed of the receivers. But the quarterback has to put the ball on the receiver to make it successful. Eric Bergeson was covering for BYU. Extra defensive back comes in for the Cougars. Third down and still two. No, they put an extra lineman. They dive for it and they don't get it. They tried the left side of the uh, Texas line and nothing doing that time. So it should be a punting down for Texas. Here comes the punting unit out there. Is that uh, Bud Orr? Bud Orr and Bob Davis stacked him up. BYU just had great penetration on this. They tried to go on the left side of the line where their big offensive linemen are. And uh, the, the, the defensive lineman of BYU got low, stopped the penetration. Then Bob Davis, the linebacker, back him up, came over the top and, and uh, stopped the back from making any more yardage. Alex Waits back to punt again for Texas. Here's the kick. Pretty good punt. Trying to kick it out of bounds, and it'll go out of bounds. It was caught by... Michael Bryan, but he just couldn't stop before he went out of bounds at the 14-yard line. I think we can see what they mean when they say Alex Waits is a good position punter. That's standing. Anytime you get it out inside the 15, it, that, that's a great punt. Well, the Cougars from Brigham Young University will take over with 6.06 to go in the first quarter. They're on their own 14-yard line. The score is Brigham Young 10 and Texas nothing. Texas is... Uh, had BYU back to well, where the Cougars have not had good field position several times in the first quarter, and yet the Cougars have still scored a touchdown and a field goal. 
Out of the shotgun is Covey. Here's the snap. Has the football. Looking to pass. Throws. Almost intercepted. Almost intercepted that time by Mark Berry. And that could have been a touchdown. Again, Texas was playing man-to-man -man coverage in the secondary, but that time they did a great job. Uh, Sean getting the snap out of the shotgun. They just brought a receiver across the middle on a down and in route. Had the receiver try to outrun. The tight end try to outrun the back. But uh, that time, as you mentioned, Mark Berry had excellent coverage. He was stride for stride. Berry's a redshirt freshman, a top athlete. He's from Dallas. The pass was intended for Cougar tight end Travis McBeth. Second and ten, Brigham Young. Covey gives him the draw to Whittingham, and there's a good hole. He's to the 20, out to the 24-yard line. Wow, they opened it up that time. And that's the kind of thing that can happen when you're throwing the ball so well, Jay. You start to throw that ball well, the linebackers start to get in their drops at the snap of the ball, and it opens up great holes. You'll see the linebackers dropping, the secondary covering, and then uh, John Hunter's going to make a great block. He's just off to the left of the screen uh, that frees him up to get the extra 10 yards that he got. It's a first down run. Stanley Richard made the tackle. Whittingham, the junior, from Orange, California. Rushed for over 400 yards last year for the Cougars. First down, Brigham Young on about the 24 and a half yard line, their own 24 and a half. BYU had 10 nothing in the first quarter. Again, out of the shotgun, direct snap to Covey. He has it. Gives him the draw to Whittingham. Whittingham, wait, there's a flag down. Whittingham dances his way to the 28-yard line, but there's also a flag drop. Paul Bierman made the tackle. We're really seeing some uh, new wrinkles in the BYU offense this week, Jay. They've really mixed it up. I think as a result of last week, you know, we mentioned they had a chance to work the bugs out, and uh, they were getting some pressure on the quarterback last week, and uh, uh, Wyoming was doing a good job of covering the straight drop back, and now they've made some good changes. They're really mixing it up, and Texas is confused on defense here today. Holding on the offense. Still first down. Well, the Cougars had a good gainer from Whittingham, but it's uh, nullified by the holding penalty. Moves the ball back to the 15-yard line. Where it is second, or check that, it's first. First and 20 for Brigham Young. Cougars have had uh, a ball possession advantage here in the first quarter, definitely. Covey up over the center this time. Well, he's had a good fall. They expect a lot of this young man. Smart quarterback. Back to pass. He's going to have to run it. No, now he gets the pass off and overthrew his man. He was open, too. Handley was open at the 38, but he threw it over his head. Handley did a good job that time. When Covey started to scramble, uh, the receiver that's the closest uh, to the direction of the quarterback's running goes deep. Handley turned and went deep. Everybody else works their way to the quarterback. He's going to drop back, and he's going to get flushed out of the pocket to the left. Now watch Handley. He goes deep as soon as Sean Covey, you see him on the top of the screen. He was open, but that's a real tough throw running to your left for a right-handed quarterback to put it on him. Good job of movement by the receivers at BYU when the quarterback was forced to scramble. Third and 20 for Brigham Young. Cougars leading 10 to nothing. And the ball on their own 15-yard line. Bellini goes in motion to the right side. Covey being chased, got away, sets up and throws, complete. Complete to the 28-yard line, but that's not nearly really enough for the first down. Good scramble by Covey. Fred Stromile covering on the play. And uh, and that was the huge defensive tackle of Texas. The Chuck Cutler. The 6'9", 288-pounder that was chasing Sean. I'll tell you what, if you've got a 6'9", 288-pounder chasing you, you can get outside real quick. Watch him coming from Watch the line, him here. right there. Hey, he moves pretty good for a big guy. But uh, Sean getting out of the grass, moving out, throwing a great ball on the run to Cutler, who was coming back to the quarterback and uh, made a good reception there. Cougars first face third and eight. Covey back to pass. Over the middle, batted in the air at the line. And see, number 87, uh, Steve was standing there, did not know that it happened. The ball dropped right at his feet. You know, that doesn't surprise me. We've had a couple of batted down balls early in the game for BYU. Uh, when you talk about the two inside guys at 6'6 six, six and 6'9, six, that's off. They put their hands up, they're nine feet tall. That's hard to throw over that, especially the short, quick breaking routes over the middle. Here's Pat Thompson into punt for Brigham Young. Notice he gets away a good one. It's caught back at the 24-yard line. Good coverage by BYU, dancing away, finally he's down. 
You know, Jay, we mentioned in the the pregame that they're going to miss Metcalf on offense, and, and I, I think we mentioned, mentioned that uh, they'll miss him the most in the punting team. He's a fabulous punt and kick returner, and that's where he's going to be missed the most. It's Willie Mac Garza who returned that one, and Texas will take over. There is a flag on the play, however, and they're going to come over and talk to the uh, Texas team captains. We didn't have an awful lot of penalties in the opening game with Wyoming, but there have been quite a few in the first quarter of this football game. We have 3.54 left to play in the first quarter. Brigham Young leading 10 to nothing. Holding by the offense while the kick's in the air. 15-yard penalty, still fourth down. So that's a 15-yard penalty, and the Cougars will have to kick it again. BYU blessed with an excellent punter, Pat Thompson. His long kick last year was 70 yards. He averaged 43.3 yards per punt last year. Second team all whack. He's a senior from Lompoc, California. Back deep is Willie Mac Garza, who's a freshman, and Chris Samuels for the University of Texas. Thompson kicking from his own three-yard line. Low snap, he scoops it up. He's going to run the football. Now he kicks it. And he's going to kick it back up and rolls out of bounds at the 35-yard line. He could, have had a first, he could have had a first down, Jay. He was thinking about it, thinking about it. He got to the line of scrimmage and said, oh, I'll have to punt it. Now you can see he's thinking about that himself. You know, watch you watch can, on the replay, Jay. He, he gets the snap and he bobbles the snap, so he, he thinks he shouldn't punt it because the guy could have blocked it. And as he gets running, he's thinking to himself, geez, I can, I can go for a first down here. No, I won't take the chance. Let me punt it here. But uh, he was thinking about it. You could tell he was thinking about going for the first. You know, when you think about that, if you're not aware of it, you can kick a ball any time. He could have kicked that at any point. It's legal. You got 51 yards on the punt. <laughs> Texas takes over, first and 10 on their own 32-yard line. Kelly will pass on first down. He rushes on, throws it downfield. Caught on the sidelines, knocked out of bounds. Nice catch that time by Tony Jones. And Rodney Rice covering. Jones ran an excellent route. He went down, fake like he was going to the post and broke back to the outside. And uh, Rodney Rice respecting his speed, playing a little bit off him so he wouldn't get deep on the post. And then still made a, made a good play to come back and get back in his face as he caught the ball. But uh, with that kind of speed, it's tough. You've got to play off him a little bit. So those routes where he's going to break back to the quarterback and break to the sideline is going to be open. First down for Texas on the Brigham Young 47-yard line. And approaching the end of the first quarter, the Cougars ahead 10 to nothing. Kelly gives on a draw, and a bit of a hole. He's all the way to the 40-yard line, dragged down about the 36-yard line. The draw working with Patrick Wilson, the ball carrier, and Chad Robinson, the tackler. That'll be close to another first down. It is a first down. Texas effectively throwing the ball last time. They got the backers to drop a little bit and come back with a sprint draw where he breaks back to the right side. An effective play. Turned the corner well. Good run by the young back. So the Horns have a first down on the Brigham Young 36-yard line right now. Trying to get their first score of the football game. Wilson goes in motion towards the left. Kelly looking to pass. Does pass. He hang on to that? No, it's an incomplete pass. Looks like Walker stumbled. Or no, that's Jones stumbled as he got the ball. And uh, it touched the turf before he could control it. Rice covering. We haven't seen Norris involved too much in the offense yet, Jay. And uh, he was the one that was very effective against BYU last year. Uh, Texas still staying with her same game plan, just quick three-step type timing things. And uh, Jones did stumble. The ball was thrown a little bit inside, and he lost control of it and went to the ground trying to get it back. It's amazing when you think of Jones. He's 5'7", weighs 140, and they say he's put on weight since last year. <laughs> <laughs> Second and 10. Kelly to pass. Rushes on. Throws it. Completes it to Jones. Out of bounds inside the 30-yard line. Rodney Rice covering again. Well, you got your hands full with this young man from Grapeland, Texas. He's run a 10.2 hundred meter down. What he's going to do is he's going to run the defensive back off. He's going to run Rodney Rice off, faking like he's going on a streak down the sideline and going deep, and then just break back to the outside. And uh, the quarterback had a good throw that time. He had good time to throw the ball. Third down, a yard to go for the first down. They're on the Cougar 27-yard line. The Cougars ahead 10-0. Texas trying to get a score. 2.50 to go in the first quarter. Quarterback dives for it, and I don't know if he made it or not. It's going to be close. Quarterback tried to go right up over the top. That's Kelly. 
Bob Davis hit him for BYU. The middle of the BYU line played it pretty tough. Getting a good surge. They're getting low and rooting them, root them out there, moving them back, getting good penetration. Then the linebackers come and finish off on the top. So he tries to jump over the top, and the linebackers do a good job of cleaning it up there. Close enough, they'll have to measure this time. I'm not going to guess on this one, Jay. I don't want to ruin my streak. It's very, very close. I think he's going to make it by the nose of the football. Okay, we'll see. A little bit more than that. It is a first down. So first and ten for Texas on the Brigham Young 26-yard line. Texas ready to go. Wilson in motion. Kelly back to pass. Lofts it for the end zone. Tipped away by Rodney Rice. Nice play by Rodney. Intended for Tony Jones. Try to take advantage of Tony Jones' speed that time. We mentioned many times he's a world-class sprinter, but uh, you got an idea of the kind of speed he had. Uh, he just runs streak right to the back of the end zone. The quarterback's going to lob it up and let him run under it. Wasn't a very good throw this time. And uh, had it been a good throw to the back of the end zone, uh, you never know what can happen with that kind of speed. Scott Peterson, the free safety, coming over to help out on that. Rodney Rice got both hands on the ball, enough to tip it away from Tony Jones. It's incomplete pass. Second and 10 from the Cougar, 26. Wilson goes in motion to the right. Fakes does give the handoff right up the middle, hardly any game at all. That's Norris. You talked about the fullback. Darren Norris, it looked like they were waiting for him. We're just going to go to the quick dive. Looked like they didn't have a very good exchange there between Norris and the quarterback and kind of slowed him down a little bit. But the middle of the BYU defense, the linebacker and defensive line just closing up everything. No room to run anywhere for Norris. Brigham Hansen, one of the first men to get to him for BYU. Third down, still about nine yards to go for a first down. Make it eight yards to go for the first down. They split two men wide to the left. Only have one setback, one man wide to the right. Kelly back to throw. The Cougars have the rush on. Kelly being chased, flips it down quickly, knocked away and incomplete. Troy Young, Troy Long, that is, for BYU. Good defensive play, but the pressure up front was the story. And a great job by the secondary. What they did was they brought the linebackers. When you bring the linebackers, you have to have man-to-man -man coverage in the secondary. There's not enough guys back there to play zone. So they got good pressure on them by bringing those linebackers on a stunt. You see Davis coming. You see the Harrison coming from the backside doing stunts. Troy Long running stride for stride with a tight end. And... Uh, all of the secondary did a good job covering all of the Texas receivers on that play. Here's Wayne Clements to try a 41-yard field goal for Texas with a minute 40 to go in the first half, first quarter. Anyway. Here's his kick, has the distance, and we'll wait and see. It is good. He kicked it through there. So Texas has its first score of the game. It's a field goal by Wayne Clements. Comes with a minute 35 to go in the first quarter, and the lead for Brigham Young is now 10 to 3. And it looks like we've got a sellout. Amazing since uh, BYU opened the stadium. 65,000 almost game after game after game. And then all 65,000 go home and call in on the radio show. And, <laughs> and, and then, they, then they watch the replay on the KBYU, team. I hope. And tell Coach Edwards what's wrong yeah. with the team. <laughs> BYU fans uh, are funny, fickle, strange. But they're Here's, good fans. But they're good fans. Here's the kickoff. Roll inside the 10-yard line, picked up there by O'Brien. Dances his way up to the 22-yard line. You know, that's a free ball rolling around down there. Texas gets down to it. And it kicks a weird thing. He, he, you can see the scoring drive there, a grab from the story drive. Uh, two minutes and one second, nine plays, 68 yards. They moved the ball well, but they couldn't put it in the end zone. Mark Berry made the uh, tackle on O'Brien, and the Cougars of BYU take over first and 10 on their own 21-yard line. And Texas has maintained uh, good defensive pressure in the first quarter of this football game. They've had BYU back in this part of the football uh, field most of the first uh, quarter, and yet the Cougars lead it 10 to 3. Covey at quarterback, first and 10 from the 21. Two setbacks. Fakes the draw, still with the ball. Throws it. It's caught by Bellini, turns the corner, evades one man, spun to the ground at the 31 yard line. I talked I talk to Matt Bellini before the game, Jay, and uh, he was excited to play Texas because, as I mentioned, they play a lot of man-to-man -man defense. Well, when you play man-to-man -man defense, you put linebackers on the backs. 
Well, Matt Blaney can run, outrun any linebacker anywhere. And, uh, and uh, watching the replay, Covey's going to take a shot after he throws the ball. A real good shot. And then the problem is you get landed on by those big defensive linemen. And a lot of times you don't see that. He's going to take a good shot, but make a good throw in the face of a good rush. And uh, as I mentioned, that linebacker, look how slow he is compared to, to Matt Bellini. He can't run man for man with Matt Bellini. That's Dwayne Duncan who made the tackle. Second down, less than a yard to go for BYU. Handley starts in motion. Back to pass is Covey. Looking right over the middle, completes it to Handley. And the big tight end has the first down for Brigham Young University. To play BYU, they have Handley back. And uh, there's a number of things they can do off that play. Handley can block. Uh, and this time they throw it to him. You know that that play has worked very well for him. What they do is they just have they have Hanley kind of drop back like he's pass blocking, kind of gets a feel for where there's going to be an opening in the zone over the middle, or and he just splits the zone, kind of a delay pattern, and he hits him late. First down, Brigham Young on the Cougar 37-yard line. Hanley shifting over to the right side for BYU. Looks like they're coming after Covey, and they hand it on a draw. Breaking the tackle at the line of scrimmage for Brigham Young is Salido, and Salido gains about five, maybe six. It looked like they had him at the line of scrimmage. Beerman and uh, Jake was tackling. One or two things usually happen on a draw when there's an all-out blitz like that, Jay. Either the back pops through that first line, and if you've got everybody coming, there's nobody but the secondary back there, and the back makes a big gain. Or they smother the draw right from the start. It's usually one of those two things happen. That's the end of the first quarter. So after one quarter of play, the score, Brigham Young University 10 and the University of Texas 3. Jay Monson, Blaine Fowler, BYU football, second quarter opening up against Texas. The Cougars have the ball, second down. That's a pitch back to Bellini. Turns the corner and has the first down with a nice run. He's up to the 47-yard line. Matt Bellini needs to thank Mike Salito for a great block that sprung him for the 10-yard gain on that one. Stanley Richard made the tackle. The Cougars had gained four on the uh, play before. They get seven on this one for a first down. And Brigham Young has a first down at midfield, leading Texas by a score of 10-3. to three. Next week on the 17th, a Saturday noon game, Utah, right here at Cougar Stadium. This is the first of five consecutive home games for BYU. Covey will drop back into the shotgun, take a direct snap. Cutler comes in motion. Here's the snap. Covey looking the field over. Floats one downfield. It's caught by Cutler to the 30, to the 25, to the 20. Cuts back into the middle. Can he make it? He's going to go all the way, and there's no flag down. Hey, that was quite a run by Chuck Cutler. He was wide open as he caught it, but he outmaneuvered three defensive men. BYU receivers ran great routes. Again, Texas getting caught man-to-man -man coverage in the secondary. And when you, when you have man-to-man -man coverage, what you try to do is run a lot of crossing routes. On uh, this particular play, and you see it on the replay, receivers are going to go down, and they're going to all cross, and it really screws up the defensive backs. Cutler came to the inside and cut back to the outside, crossed with the outside receiver, and uh, was wide open. Defense back couldn't stay with him. And then what a great run afterwards, cutting back and then taking an angle to the end zone so that nobody could catch him. Good crossing routes by the receivers, taking advantage of that man-to-man -man defense of Texas. And they're playing against a team with one of the fastest secondaries in the nation, but it's also an inexperienced secondary. Here's Kaufman to try the extra point. He made the first one. Thompson places it down. Kaufman drives it up there, and he makes it. And we have 14-18 to go in the first half of the football game, and Brigham Young University has built up a 17-3 lead over the University of Texas on two long scoring strikes and a field goal. Well, the Cougar crowd really enjoying things right now after BYU had kind of a downer last week against the University of Wyoming. They look like an entirely different team right now. There's that uh, last touchdown by Cutler. That's Cutler's second TD of the year. He had a uh, scoring pass from Detmer against Wyoming. And he made a great run on that one as he well. Did. He was able to scramble and get free. Kaufman will kick off for BYU. There are the first quarter stats. See the Cougars with more passing yards, not much in the way of rushing yards for either team. Uh, BYU 170 first quarter yards. That's amazing. On six receptions, they have 157 yards passing. Of course, that the long 80 yarder that be, began the game and that long one there. Six completions for 157 yards. That's amazing. For BYU, Kaufman will kick off. Several Texas players on this BYU team. In fact, Ty Detmer, the number two quarterback, was telling the uh, Texas media he was a real Longhorn fan as he grew up. Here's Coffin to kick off for the BYU Cougars. 
from the 35. Drives it high and very deep. It'll be taken about uh, eight yards into the end zone. No return. Texas first and 10 on their own 20-yard line. Shannon Kelly, a quarterback. Has one man split wide to the left, one to the right, and he's back to pass. Throws for the sideline and throws it over everybody's head. Rodney Rice over there covering for BYU on Tony Jones. And they say Tony is a game breaker. And Blaine, what kind of a stat is that he has on TD to pass catch ratio? For every five balls he catches, he scores once. That's amazing. That really is. He is a game breaker. He can go deep. And at any time in a game, an 80 yarder can go on with Jones out there on the field. Second and 10 for the Longhorns on their own 20 yard line. Running play. That's the fullback Norris, and they really jam him up again. Darren Norris, Bud Orr for BYU, and Regan Hansen. They've tested the middle of the BYU line about three times now, Jay, and I don't think they've gotten more than three yards on three tries. Some young men playing this year for BYU that are new to the program. Bud Orr is one of them. He's a 270-pound junior from Salt Lake City, but he was a first-team All-American at Dixie Junior College. On the replay, they just straight-ahead blocking up in the front. They're going to try to move him out with their big people, and, and uh, the backers and defensive line of BYU just too tough for him in the middle there tonight. So it's third and nine, and Kelly will throw for it. Dropping way back, the rush is on, flips it over the middle, and it's incomplete. Again, good pressure up front. Tony Crutchfield covering for BYU, but it was a defensive line that put the pressure on. Of course, the secondary had him covered. With excellent coverage and excellent pressure. That, that combination, no offense is going to move the ball. Here is Alex Waits to, waits to punt runs once again. See, he has kicked. This will be his fourth punt of the ball game. And he's averaging 45, no, 42 so far in the game. Michael Bryan back deep for BYU, waiting for this punt. Retreats, watches it bounce and go out of bounds right around the 35-yard line. So Brigham Young University will send in the offensive unit and see if they can move it again. They did the last time and scored to open the second period, and Brigham Young leads 17-3. For the Cougars, we have uh, Covey, of course, a quarterback. Cutler's in as a wide receiver. Whittingham's a fullback. Along the line, it's Brian White at tackle, Don Busenbark at guard, Bill Noahi at center, Warren Wheat at guard, and John Hunter at tackle. That's a big offensive line. He's doing a good job tonight. Hey, we're up here. If we wave, maybe you can see us. <laughs> Couldn't see through the glass. Covey on the shotgun, hands it off to Whittingham to the outside, all the way to the 50, to the 45, to the 40, and out of bounds at the 35-yard line. And man, did the draw work that time. You know, it works particularly well out of shotgun because you, you set up in the shotgun, you really get the defense thinking pass. And so their first step is back. Those linebackers go back first. And it, it really has a it gives the um, linemen a chance to set up their blocks. They even had a, uh, a uh, mix up on the snap a little bit. Covey had to pick they the did. ball up off of the ground and hand it to Whittingham. And he and, and Whittingham uh, almost We just together. have the end of it here, but uh, great blocks in the interior line by every one of the, of the offensive linemen for BYU. Brokes Whittingham into the secondary. Stan the uh, Richard finally knocked him out of bounds, but the Cougars have a first down on the Texas 34 yard line, and they'll operate out of the shotgun again. Covey looking the field over. Here's the snap. Fakes the draw and passes downfield, and it is incomplete. He had a man there, too, and it led him just a little bit too much. That was Doman. You'll notice, uh, Jay, that no free safety back there to help out. They're bringing linebackers on that one. The linebackers are going to come and cover backs. They're going man-to-man -man coverage. There's no free safety to help out the corner, and if you've got a speedy receiver like Doman who can outrun the corner and get the ball on him, he's going to score. Irish Lewis was covering, but the ball overthrown just a hair, and so it's simply an incomplete pass. Second and 10, Brigham Young on the Texas 34. Covey calls timeout. Snap is right to Covey. Rushes on, gets the pass off, and it's caught at the 30 yard line. And that was a nice catch by Michael Bryan. He was well covered by Stanley Richard. That time Texas brought in an extra defensive back, and played a man to man on the halfback. O'Brien ran a good route, but the, the defense back was right with him. Took a great throw and a great catch and concentration to make that one. Say it. it was an incomplete pass. Apparently, yeah, they 
they called, so. they called it an incomplete. Called it was, an incomplete pass. Say he trapped it against the ground or didn't have possession when he hit the ground or something, but it looked good to me from here. That's what they ruled, though, an incomplete pass. So it's third and ten for BYU. They're still on the 34-yard line. 12.50 to go in the first half. Covey up over the center this time. It's Tyler Anderson in the game. He sends him further wide to the right. Fakes a pitch, rolling out to the right, looking downfield. And Covey sets up. He's going to throw it. Here's the throw, and it is incomplete in the end zone. Branson had to scoop that one, and he was open. Irish Lewis covering, and the Cougars were just a hair short of another six points. Texas making it real easy on Sean Covey here tonight. They're lining up in exactly what they're running. A lot of teams disguise what coverage they're going to run by lining up differently and then jumping into it at the snap of the ball. If they're going to play man-to-man, -man, they line up right in it before the snap, and Covey's having an easy time of reading the defense. Kaufman's going to try a 41-yard field goal, and, man, Brigham Young University was very, very... It's a, actually from the 41, so it's a 51-yard attempt. The Cougars very, very close to another six points there, but not quite. Pat Thompson holding the ball. Line it, or the uh, spot will be the 41-yard line. Here's the kick. Pretty good distance. Oh, a lot of distance. He made it! That's a 51-yard field goal by Hoffman. <laughs> and Blaine, it could have been another 20 yards, I think. He really smacked that one. I think he could have made that from 65 with ease. He really has a foot. So Brigham Young University adds three to the score. It is 20 for the Cougars of BYU and three for the University of Texas. There's the last scoring drive for BYU. Big long run by Whittingham helps set it up. And the crowd with the BYU team doing some cheerleading, being very, very vocal right now. Here's Goffin's kick, long and deep. In fact, it is out of the end zone. It's a nice thing to have in your arsenal. He kicked that one really well. After the 51-yard field goal, he was pumped up and let that one loose. Texas has along the line. Chad McMillan is 267. Dwayne Miller is 270. Alan Champagne's the center at 284. Uh, Omar Saleh, who's 262, and Stan Thomas, 279. A lot of size up front. And their quarterback is Shannon Kelly, a 6'1 senior from Houston. He's an experienced quarterback. He was backed up Stafford last year, but started a couple of games. He looks to pass. Going to throw deep. Way downfield, and it is. Was that cut? What a catch. What a catch. Up over Bergeson was Troy Jones, the little guy who's only 5'7". Did a high jump to grab that one, and he made the catch. And just boy, could you see his speed. Watch on the replay. Bergson had a huge cushion on him. And watch Jones just make up that cushion as the ball's in the air. He really has some speed. And boy, he got three feet off the ground to catch that ball. So a quick strike by Texas puts the uh, Longhorns into BYU territory. Watch Shannon Kelly watch as he sees the reception. Pretty, First down. Pretty serious. <laughs> First down on the 42. Running play up the middle, flag goes down. Gain of a couple of yards was Williams, the ball carrier, tailback. Holding call on Texas. Regan Hansen, the tackler. Ten yard generally, still first down. Eric Williams is now in a tailback for Texas. Remember, Eric Metcalf is not here. He was declared ineligible for one game by the NCAA, one of the best running backs in the nation. And they had been running uh, Patrick Wilson. You saw Shannon Kelly's stats there. And uh, he's really having a good game. They're just not putting the ball in the end zone. Eric Williams is a 195-pound sophomore. Kelly looking to throw. Quick out to the sideline. It's complete. Oh, there's that speed. He's knocked out of bounds at the 35-yard line. The scat back. It's not quite enough for the first down, but close. Bob Davis knocked him out of bounds. I'll tell you what, Eric Burgesson just was down on his knees just for a second, and that's all it took for Jones to get around him. He is really quick. So after the holding penalty, they make it up and then some. Now wait a minute. They're bringing the ball back up field. And they flag on the play. Let's get the call from the uh, referee at this point. The illegal formation, only six men on the line of scrimmage offense, still first down. You heard the call. Illegal formation costs them a big gainer. 
I mean a big one. They are back now on their own 44 yard line and they could have been down inside the BYU 30 yard line. Clark comes in bringing a play Stephen Clark. He's the tight end two year starter junior. First down. And 25. Kelly fakes the draw. Little swing over to Norris on the right side. He reverses direction, comes back into the middle, avoids a couple of tacklers, and is down to the 44-yard line, 42-yard line by Bob Davis and Scott Peterson. He did that once last year against BYU when he reversed, came back in the middle, and went all the way down, what, about the four-yard line? And the replay will see. Gets up into the line. The offensive lineman let the defensive line go through, and they toss it out to Norris. Watch 51's block here. Good block there, and he cuts off of that block. Now he's going the opposite direction of everybody else, and it's tough to get a handle on him. Second and 11 for Texas. Kelly hit from behind, but gets the pass off. It's incomplete. Covering long for BYU and Rice. And Kelly was hit hard right in the middle of the back as he threw the football. Got a lot of pressure on him. That'll bring up third and 11 for the Longhorns. Brigham Young, 20. The University of Texas, 3, with 11.28 to go in the first half. Okay, we're on the BYU 42 and a half yard line right now. One man wide to the left, one wide to the right, one setback. Kelly back to pass. Pressure's on. We'll have to run it up the middle. Dives down inside the 40 to the 37 yard line. That uh, front defensive line for BYU putting the pressure on. Tim Knight led the way for the Cougars. Kelly scrambled up the middle, but not enough for the first down. Gives their field goal kicker a little better shot at one hover. You can see on the replay, the pressure came from behind. He tried to go up the middle. Tim Knight got his big hand out there and tripped him up. Clements will try the field goal from the, let's see, that's the 45-yard line. So it's a 55-yard attempt. Now there's timeout call. Texas uh, ran out of time, so they called timeout. And breaking the action with 10.51 left to play in the first half. The Cougars from BYU leading by 17 points, 20 to 3. Texas ready to try the field goal. It's Clements who will try to kick it, the left-footed kicker from the 45-yard line. He's made one in the game. Cougars rush him. He gets the kick off. Pretty good distance. And it is good. He hit it. That's a 55-yard field goal. And Jay, that one had room to spare as well. Sure did. Just like the one Coffin hit a moment ago for BYU. And so the score is Brigham Young University 20 and the University of Tech, uh, Texas 6 with 10.47 left to go in the first half. First time they kicked off to BYU in the game. No, the second time. Clements kicking off. Drives it all the way back to the goal line where it's taken by Brooks. 5-10, 15, 20, and down at the 22-yard line. Michael Brooks, in Fremont, California. A two-year star at Snow College and transferred to the Cougars. Has pretty good speed. He can run. Some stats up to this point, Jay. BYU has 209 yards passing and 50 yards rushing against the Texas defense. Now, 50 yards rushing is more than they had in the entire game last year against Texas. They only rushed for 44 yards against Texas last year. First down, Brigham Young on the Cougars' own 21-yard line. Covey quarterbacking. There's a pitch back to O'Brien trying to sweep the left side. But no, nothing doing that time. That's Britt Hager, the great linebacker from the University of Texas, who was right with him out there, step for step, and they lose yardage on that one. I'll tell you what, Jay, I am impressed with Hager's speed. He's 6'1", weighs 230 pounds, so he's a solid guy. But you watch him uh, make up the ground between he and uh, Bellini or on, uh, with O'Brien on this one. He comes into your picture. He is real quick, and he's a sure tackler. A four-year starter for the University of Texas. I believe he had one year uh, after an injury that was given back to him. So it's second down for the Cougars and 12 for first down. Covey will slip back into the shotgun position. Looks the field over. Floats it down the sidelines. Had to unload that one that time. As the rush was on, it's incomplete, thrown out of bounds. Tex Mercer covering back downfield on uh, Bellini, and it was big Steve Llewellyn who put the pressure on up front. Watch the hit on Covey. You know, the quarterback takes a lot of hits after he lets go of the ball. A lot of people don't realize that. Uh, 
quarterback gets hit almost every time he throws the ball, unless it has outstanding protection. He'll usually let go of the ball and get hit immediately following. I'm going to ask you a question about it in the second lane. Third and 12 for BYU. Covey back to pass. Rushes on this time, rolling out. Sets up, throws it downfield, and it's caught at the 34-yard line. How often as a quarterback did you see if the pass was complete? Not very often. Usually either somebody's in your way, as soon as you throw it, somebody gets in your way, or you get knocked down. A lot of times you can see it from the ground. You see this one, Covey coming out, rolling to the right. They're moving the quarterback around today, giving him a little bit more time to throw. And uh, sets up and throws it at Cutler running. He went on a streak pattern down the sideline and then cut it back to the outside. Good throw and catch. And uh, good foot movement by Covey, that back there. Did a good job. Charles Hunter hit Cutler. Hung on to the football for a first down for Brigham Young at the Cougar 38-yard line. Shotgun again. Bad snap. Covey chases it down. The Cougars will simply cover the football, but they'll lose yardage this time. You know, I'd been thinking about that uh, earlier, Jay, and, and, and didn't even bring it up because it hadn't happened, but when you, when you go to that shotgun as a steady diet, that's one of the risks you have is that the center won't get the ball to the quarterback. There's Covey's stats up to this point in the game. 8 out of 17, 228 yards, two touchdowns. They have a tremendous game. Giles and Rhodes uh, chased the ball down that time, but BYU covered it. That one just came a, a, a low grounder to the left side. And Covey wasn't a good enough shortstop to pick it up, but he wisely just fell on the ball and did try to pick it up and do something with it. They lose 13 yards. So it's second and 23, Brigham Young. Cutler goes in motion to the left side. Covey pitches to the right side, and Bellini turns the corner, busts his way out to the 29-yard line. He gained some of the yardage they lost on that snap. We'll face third down. 8.23 left to go. Oscar Giles, the tackler. There's the crowd today. I don't know what the... Uh, they haven't announced the attendance, but it's got to be close to 65,000. And a nationwide television audience. The ESPN. Third down, Brigham Young. Third and 19. Shotgun again. Bellini in motion. Covey has it this time. Throws it over the middle. It's going to be intercepted this time. Back to the 45. Back to the 40. To the 35. He overthrew the intended receiver. So Texas gets the first big break of the game. That's Stanley Richard who intercepted that pass. Now they'll have to turn it over to the defense. Covey himself made the tackle. That was one of the few times, Jay, where uh, Texas actually had a free safety back backing up the guys in coverage. O obvious, you know, prevent type coverage situation where it was third and long. Well, that free safety was hanging back there. And uh, he hasn't been back there all day. Sean looking, uh, the man was open. He had beaten his man, but the free safety was back there kind of as a center fielder backing up and made the play. So Texas takes over first and 10 on the BYU 33-yard line. Here's Kelly throwing for the sidelines, and it's incomplete this time. Try to hit Tony Jones, covered by Peterson for BYU. The pass overthrown. Light of scrimmage after that interception, the first interception of the football game. Here's the BYU 34-yard line, 7.40 to play. In the first half, the Cougars leading 20 to 6. That's the first turnover tonight of the game. Second down for the Longhorns. They split two men wide to the right, one to the left. Kelly is throwing a lot, gives them a delayed handoff up the middle. There's a big hole this time. He's all the way to the 25-yard line of Brigham Young University. Scott Peterson knocks him out of bounds. That's the tailback, Patrick Wilson. Texas had an interesting philosophy on their draw game. They'll start the quarterback out on like a short sprint or a straight drop back, and then they hand the ball off to the fullback, but he cuts back against the grain on the draws. He goes backside to the left. You'll see it here on the replay. Kelly will start out in a straight drop back, hand the ball off. The fullback gets on the right side of the quarterback and cuts back across the grain. Gets it's good yards on that one. It was not enough for the first down. They're looking for it right here with Kelly, and Kelly makes it. He faked it up the middle, rolled out, and uh, stumbled through for the first down to the 23-yard line. Actually went to an option play that time, Jay, where he... he uh, had the option to hand it to the fullback to the center of the line, keep it himself, or pitch back to a pitch back. He chose to keep it himself wisely and got the first down. Pete Harston made the hit for BYU. There's Kelly Stats having a good game, 10 of 21 for 136 yards. But as I mentioned before, they're not getting the ball in the end zone. First and 10, Texas on the Brigham Young 23-yard line. Jones is wide to the left. 
for the Longhorns. Eye formation. There's a pitch to the right side. That's Wilson or, uh, carrying the football, and he bangs his way inside the 15-yard line. Patrick Wilson. Scott Peterson and Troy Long combining to make the tackle for Brigham Young. 6.54 left to play in half number one. And now the Texas team on the move. Just a good line surge on this play and a great block by Norris uh, to get the linebacker outside and allow Wilson to cut up into the middle. You don't like to see your safety men have to make too many tackles. That means the back's getting too far into the second half. Second and two for Texas on the Brigham Young 15-yard line. They do not have a touchdown in the game so far, but they're threatening now. The Cougars have got a couple of touchdowns and a couple of field goals. Kelly fakes the handoff, still has the football. It's hit as he throws it, and it's incomplete. Well, he took a shot that time as he threw the football by was it Tim Clark. Yeah, Tim Clark got to it. They call that a naked, Jay. They hope they leave that backside end unblocked with the backside tackle unblocked, so Tim Clark was unblocked. They hope that the fake is good enough to cause that guy to go inside and allow the quarterback to get outside him. But Tim Clark didn't go for that fake at all. He stayed outside, makes a hit on the quarterback, and he had to throw it before he was ready and before the receiver really made his break. So they face third down and two at the 15-yard line. Split Jones to the left. High formation. Norris. Off to the right side, has the first down, down close to the 12-yard line. Sort of knifed his way through, Darren Norris and Scott Peterson and Tim Knight combined to tackle him. We're running a little option game now, Jay, where they'll, uh, has the option to give it to the fullback or keep it or pitch, and he gave it to the fullback. That time there was a little seam that Norris was able to work his way through. That's the play he went a long way on in the game against BYU last year. He went down to the two-yard line. First and 10 on the Brigham Young 11-yard line, the first real big threat of the game for Texas in the entire first half. Two setbacks, slot back to the right, Jones wide to the left. He looks to throw for him, lobbing for the end zone, and it is incomplete. He caught the ball, but he was out of bounds. Covering was Bergeson for BYU. And Bergeson was running stride for stride. That was actually a good throw and a good catch, just about a yard wide. Is Tony Jones, with Jones, we know he's a sprinter. Is he a high jumper? He could be. He really has some good leaping ability. We've seen it today. 5.57 in the first half, 20 to 6, Brigham Young. What they're going to do is have the quarterback just throw the ball up to the back corner and have the receiver try to run under it and get to the ball. Quarterback just threw it a little bit too wide this time, but look at that leaping ability. You see his left foot just came six inches out of bounds. Second and ten from the 11. Kelly gives him the draw. No game. Might have lost a yard that time. As Knight for Brigham Young, Black Patrick Wilson and hit him hard. That'll bring up third down. Lost just a little on the play. Third, a little more than 10. Call it 10 and a half yards for the first down. BYU defense trying to get the fans into the game. It would be a boost for the defense if they could hold them to at least the field goal attempt. Third down call. Kelly wants to throw for it. Sets up, does fire it. Incomplete. Intended for Jones at the one-yard line, but Bergeson was right on him, and they'll have to go to the field goal unit. That's a moral victory for the defense. You know, Jay, both times, Texas, in their play selection, uh, when they tried to throw, they tried to throw to the short side of the field. They're on the left hash. They don't have much room to work over there, and they tried to work Jones over there on the short side of the field. I'm surprised they didn't try to go to the wide side of the field, give the receivers more room to work the routes. Well, they have the field goal kicker in there, Clements. He's hit two of them, one a 55-yarder. This is from the 18-yard line. Call it a 28-yard attempt. Here's the kick. Kind of a wobbly one off to the right, and he missed it. It's like he hooked it. He got it got blocked at the line of scrimmage, Jay. Came off of somebody's it was hand. Blocked? Yeah, okay. it went off to the right. Came off real low. He did not get it. his foot into it as well that time, and apparently, as Blaine pointed out, somebody got a hand on it at the line of scrimmage. Davi at quarterback up over the center this time. Handley shifting over to the left side. Covey gives him the draw to Whittingham, no, or O'Brien, which is it? The ball's knocked free, but the officials had already blown it dead. A gain of a yard at most, maybe two. That's Salito, I believe, carried it. Texas tackling the football that time. Britt Hager. Here you see the first down story. Texas actually having more first downs than BYU, but the first downs don't matter. It's what's on the scoreboard that counts. BYU leading the game 20 to 6. Whittingham back in the game for the Cougars at fullback. Branson out wide to the left. Cutler, no, Doman wide to the right for BYU. 
Second down and nine. Covey with the ball, throws it very quickly. He had to unload at that time. And threw it before the play could really develop as they read the bootleg action. On that bootleg, they count on the backside linebacker to not be coming on that, and he blissed on that. It was Dwayne Duncan, the, the backside linebacker, the weak side linebacker, and he came full speed and made Sean deliver the ball before he wanted to, before the receiver was able to look back for the ball. And Stanley Richard was covering the intended receiver. So it's third and nine for Brigham Young. And the Texas defense has been uh, a stiff a bit here towards the end of the first half. Cougars doing some shifting. Third and nine. Bellini goes in motion to the right side. Covey back to pass, rolling to the right, looking downfield. Sets up and throws downfield. Cut at the 45-yard line by Matt Bellini. That's a big first down for Brigham Young. Tex Mercer covering. Bellini a skidding catch. Like he was sliding into second base. That was a great catch. You're going to see a lot of motion out of BYU today because as you run in motion, you can tell whether it's man-to-man -man or zone defense. If a guy runs with a motion, it's man-to-man. That guy ran with a motion, and he knew, um, Covey knew that Bellini was going to be open, man-to-man -man coverage, and hit him. Big first down for the Cougars up to the 45-yard line. 4.09 left to go in the first half. After the defense stopped Texas, it'd be something that the Cougars could put points on the board before the end of the half. There's Handley going in motion to the left side. Covey back to throw. Throws it quickly over the middle. Incomplete. Intended for Handley and touched by Paul Bierman. Ball a little bit overthrown. Playing, I think, both teams a little more successful defensively right now in putting pressure on the quarterbacks. Kind of getting a feel for the, the offense the other team's running and they're putting some pressure on them. I think Texas has found it that that's the way to, uh, to get the BYU to put a little pressure on the quarterback. Of course, they're leaving themselves vulnerable in the secondary when they do that, and that's why BYU's had the big plays. They're not moving consistently, but they're having big plays, and that's what's hurting Texas. Second and ten, Brigham Young. Copy to pass. Runs right into a sack that time. He tried to roll out, and Oscar Giles was right there, and he ran right into it. They lose big yardage in that sack. Texas brought eight people that time, Jay. They brought eight people and left three people in the secondary. If you looked down the field after that play, you saw three receivers and three men covering and everybody else on the ball. They brought the linebackers. They brought one of the secondary men in an all-out blitz and, and got to, to Covey before he could release the ball. So they lose 11 yards on it, make it third and 21 for Brigham Young, back to the 34-yard line. 3.15 left to go in the first half. Everybody up in the line of scrimmage again. Covey fakes one way, rolls out the other way, sets up, here's his pass, and it's caught by Hanley to the 40, to the 35, down to the 32-yard line of Texas. There's a flag down. Flag down back at the 42-yard line. Passing team, still third down. So the Cougars, instead of a first down on the Texas 32, have third down near their own 32. Where is it spotted down? On their own 29-yard uh, line. CJ, when you really think about that, that that's about a 40-yard penalty. It sure when you is. need to play that gains 30 yards. Third and 26 for Brigham Young. They're on top of Covey this time before he can get rid of the football, so BYU is going to have to punt the ball with 2.53 left to go. Paul Bierman right on top of him. Again, uh, BYU tried to run the naked. They just ran at the play before where they fake one way and, and they don't block the backside linebacker. Well, last time the linebacker dropped, this time he came and, and caused the play to be broken up. That was Charles Hunter, the linebacker, who broke it up. So here's Pat Thompson to punt from the Cougar 10-yard line. Two men back deep standing at the 30. Thompson has it and gets away a dandy. Kicks it all the way back to the 25-yard line. Fielded there, back up to the 30. Tries to get outside, and he's got some room. Up to the 45, to the 50-yard line. Still on his feet, he might go all the way. He will, he'll take it all the way, and there's no flag down that I can see. Is there? Couple of Check them. it, okay. <laughs> I did not see it, there's a flag down at the 50-yard line, and, and there's, there's one also at, one back at the 35. I don't know if those are clips, the one on the 35, the guy was already in the end zone, and the official threw the flag back at the 35, so that was something real late. 
probably an unsportsmanlike conduct or something like that. And the one on the 50, you never know. Could be a clip or a hold or anything. Well, a Texas team thinks the penalty is against Brigham Young and the things are in their favor. All right, all right. Looks like they've got the kicking team going out to kick an extra point. Well, they've called a penalty on each team. Personal foul, I think, on Brigham Young and clipping on Texas. Now the question is, do those offset or is one a dead ball and one a live ball? Or Texas team came on the field for a moment. You could tell they thought they had a touchdown. I don't think they do, Blaine. They'll probably kick it over again. We have a personal foul on the kicking team during the kick. We have clipping by the defense during the return. They elected offsetting penalties. It'll still be fourth down. Pat Thompson's lined up to kick. They are showing that they're going to go after the kicker. After the uh, punter, see if they can get the football. Here's the snap. And the kick. High and fairly deep. This will come down at the 30. Oh, he's hit right away, and the ball goes bouncing free. And I think Brigham Young has it. And what a turnaround. Just a moment ago, Texas had returned a punt for an apparent touchdown. This time, BYU covered it very well. Was it Eric Ferguson who made the hit? And they recovered the ball as it was knocked bouncing free. And BYU will have a first down on the Texas 30-yard line. Ferguson just timed it perfectly. He just held up just a second. You could see it there on the replay to let the receiver catch the ball and then knocked him as soon as he caught it. The difference in those two punts, Jay, the first punt, Pat Thompson kicked the ball so long and so low that the cover team couldn't get down there. That was a little shorter punt, but a lot higher. He was able to kick the cover team to get down there and make the play. You can kick it beyond your coverage, Yes, right? you can. Well, Brigham Young with a great opportunity. That's the first turnover to favor the Cougars. They have a first down on the Texas 32-yard line. Sean Covey quarterbacking. Here's a handoff to Bellini. Bellini sliding off the left side. Gains maybe a yard. Penalties can kill you. Second down, they didn't gain anything on the last play. Covey signaling something at the line of scrimmage. He's calling an audible. He's back to pass. Flips it down the sideline. Oh, nice try, but it's incomplete. Covey saw something in the secondary. Obviously, he thought there was going to be a blitz coming. and wanted to get a quick throw off down the sideline against man-to-man -man coverage. Actually, very good man-to-man -man coverage there. And uh, still, he almost came up with a catch. Third and ten for Brigham Young. Covey back to pass. Good protection this time. Fires. Nice catch at the 21-yard line by Cutler. That was a good grab. Covey is mentally playing very well right now. He was back in the shotgun that time. He came up. There was going to be a strong safety blitz that time. The free safety was over on the tight end, man-to-man. -man. He called the play. He could get off quick against the blitz and completed it. Very heads-up play by the quarterback. Minute 10 to go in the half. The Cougars do have a timeout left. Covey back to throw. Good protection. Here's his pass. It's caught. Trying to get out of bounds was... Uh, Bellini, but he couldn't get out of bounds. He did get inside the 15-yard line where Tex Mercer pulled him down. Covey calling a play from the line of scrimmage. Running play. Oh, it opened up for a moment, but then it closed. It looked like uh, Whittingham had a shot. 34 seconds to go in the half. Britt Hager, that great linebacker, tackled him. And again, he impressed me with his speed because there was a hole there, and boy, he closed it real quick. Third and two for Brigham Young. Clock running with 23 seconds showing now. Covey looking. Flips for the end zone. Oh, almost, but it's incomplete. A little too tall for Cutler down the sidelines, but it will leave them with a good field goal shot if they elect to do that. Stop and a try field goal from the 19-yard line. He's made two in the game so far. And did he miss it? He did. He misses this one. So the Cougars with an opportunity to put points on the board after uh, Texas uh, fumbled the football. They're not able to do so. Only 13 seconds to go in the half. And the Long Longhorns will take over on their own 20-yard line. BYU scored on the first offensive play of the game on an 80-yard pass from Covey to Doman, and they've led the entire football game. Kelly with the ball. He's going to just down it. They'll say that's enough. And the clock will run out on the first half of the football game. And so, after one half of play, a fired-up Cougar team from Brigham Young University 
leads the Longhorns from the University of Texas by a score of 20 to 6. And we'll be back in just a moment for the start of the second half. Brigham Young University football from Cougar Stadium tonight. A beautiful night for a football game. And at halftime, the Cougars have the advantage over the uh, Longhorns from the University of Texas by a score of 20 to 6. One note, injury-wise, we note that Darren Handley, the Cougars' starting tight end, uh, is uh, has his shoulder pads up. Looks to me like maybe his shoulder is, is taped up, and he apparently will not play in the second half. What do you think of the first half, Blaine? What's your reaction? Well, I'm surprised. I know that Texas thought that they could play man-to-man -man defense on BYU. They felt that they had superior athletes, as you mentioned at the onset of the game. But I was surprised that they stayed with it that long. They stayed with man-to-man -man coverage in the secondary the whole first half, and they really got beat with some long plays, and they haven't changed. Let's see if they make a change in the second half to more zone defense. Okay, BYU will receive to open the second half. Here's the kick. It's coming back to the five-yard line, taken there by O'Brien. He's up to the 20, to the 25, skirts into the middle, and is up to the 34-yard line. Pretty good return by O'Brien. I think he got a hand at the BYU defense, too, in the first half of the game. They played very, very well. There are some first-half stats. Cougars with 296 total yards, so they're on their way to a 300 or to a 600-yard game if they can keep that up. There you see the passing distribution, and uh, you can see that it's being spread out very well. And there for Texas, throwing almost exclusively to the wide receivers. First and ten, Brigham Young on their own 33-yard line as we open the third quarter of the ball game. Covey gives them the draw, and there's a pretty good hole. That's uh, Salido. Salido scrambles out to the 44-yard line. Britt Hager stayed with him and finally knocked him down. I'll tell you again, Hager impressed me with his speed. There's a quarterback comparison in the first half. You can see both throwing about the same number of balls, almost the same completion percentage, but the big plays that BYU's had allowing Covey to have 269 yards in the first half and two touchdowns. We're going to have to measure and see if the Cougars got 10 yards on the first pop of the uh, second half or not. Here comes the chain gang out there. Reminder, BYU playing on a Thursday night, and they've got uh, a couple of days off. And a week from Saturday, play UTEP here in a very important league game. You know, uh, Blaine, some people are talking about the Cougars losing to Wyoming and that, you know, the year was over. They lost that first game. I can think of a lot of times through the years when BYU lost a league game early and then won all the rest of them. Yeah, I, I remember some of the years that I was here, we didn't win openers and uh, went on to have fantastic years. Uh, you know, you got to work the kinks out in the first game. And as I mentioned, it's tough for a passing team to really gel in that first game. And they saw some things last week. They've made some adjustments on offense. They've changed their play calling strategy a little bit. And look much more effective here tonight. Didn't quite make the first down that time. So it is second down. Inches to go for a first down for Brigham Young University. On their own 40, just over the 43-yard line. Only one setback. And Salito goes in motion. The only setback. Covey will go for it himself. Pulls his way forward and has the first down. Ken Hackamack made the tackle. The word we have is that uh, Handley has a dislocated shoulder and is out for sure in this game. Now that's a blow to the Cougar team. He's a good blocker, big, strong uh, football player, and catch the ball. I'll tell you what, once, once he catches the ball, Jay, he is very difficult to bring down because of his great leg strength. First down, Brigham Young on the Cougar 46-yard line as we open the third period of play. That's Macbeth in motion. Here's the pitch back to Bellini. Bellini cuts inside a blocker and would be pulled down short of the line of scrimmage. They tried the sweep. Did not work. Hackamack led the way defensively. Boy, I tell you what, Ken Hackamack for a 6'9", 288-pounder sure moves well. I mean, he came across the line of scrimmage, and, and as Bellini cut back, you'll see Hackamack come into the screen. Bellini had to cut back inside because the linebacker forced the play back in. Hackamack, the big lineman, moving his way down the line and making the tackle in pursuit from the backside. Okay, the Cougars have second down after losing two, second and 12 near midfield. Third quarter of the game, Brigham Young ahead 20 to 6 over the University of Texas. Covey will throw, pretty good protection. Lost one way downfield. He's got a man there and he led him too much. He was open at the 25 yard line. Led him just a little bit too much. Tried to hang that one up there for him to run under it. And see, that's the kind of play that Texas is vulnerable to. That time they brought everybody, including strong safety. So they only had three defense backs there in man to man coverage. Sean was going to take advantage of that, trying to hit his receiver deep with no, no help but man-to-man -man coverage. Just a little bit off on that one. It was Matt Odell down deep for Brigham Young, a sophomore from Orem. He's a pretty good receiver. Third down and 12 for the Cougars of Brigham Young. Not much 
pressure up front this time. Covey fires. Nice catch to the 38-yard line of the University of Texas. That's Branson who grabbed it for BYU, and Mark Berry tackled it. You know, uh, BYU consistently in this game have been in the hole. They'll get stopped a couple of plays, and then they'll come up the big one. This time, this is one of the first uh, different coverages we've seen all day from Texas, and they still get a complete. That time, they played what they call inside-outside coverage. They had two safeties in the middle field that were helping out. More of a zone-type coverage, but uh, BYU still able to get a guy open in the seam. So big first down. The pass completed to Jeff Branson, the junior, from Huntington Beach, California. And the Cougars have a first down on the Horns' 38-yard line. They jumped offside that time, I believe. Let's see if Texas was drawn offside or not. There was movement along the line. The ball was not snapped. Cougars said it was on uh, Texas, and so does the official. Here's the five-yard walk-off. Look, like they changed the cadence that time. A dead ball, offside, on the defense, still first down. First and five, Brigham Young, on the Texas 32, 33-yard line, make that. You'll see the whole Texas line. Sean Covey changing up the count. He had been calling it on one, I think, a lot on the first sound. That time one on the second sound, and everyone jumped. Like they did it again. That time, I think the BYU line might have moved on the left side there. It will just trade penalties there. Dead ball, false start on the offense, still first down. Okay, so we're back to first and ten. At the 38-yard line of uh, the University of Texas. 12.43 to go in quarter number three. Brigham Young leading the Texans 20 to 6. First down play. In motion is Macbeth. Covey gives him the draw to Salido. Salido skirting to the outside. He's to the 35 yard line. Mike Salido, a junior from Union City, California. He was a track star in high school, tackled by Britt Hager. It's one of these runners that runs north and south. And he finds a little seam and he's through it. Just turns his body sideways a little bit. He's a real slashing type runner. Game four on that one. Second and six for Brigham Young. Six man defensive front this time. Covey to pass, does quickly, completes it. Won't be much of a game, but they pick up about three. Completed it to Macbeth. The flat to number There's Darren Hanley, who we are told has dislocated his shoulder and is out of this game. Stanley Richards the tackle in the last play. That particular play, Jay, the, the receiver did what they call a sight adjustment. Sean Covey didn't pick up the blitz. There was a blitz coming, and the receiver saw the blitz and made the adjustment himself. They made it at the snap of the ball. And they were able to complete it for a few yards and avoid the sack. So it makes it third for Brigham Young, third and four on the Texas 32-yard line. Shotgun formation. Now we got to wait and see. It looked like uh, Covey wanted the snap. It wasn't made, and I think the BYU line moved. Leg on the play. Dead ball. Dead ball. False start. False start on the offense. Still third down. So the Cougars have uh, hurt themselves in this drive with a couple of uh, part false uh, starts. <laughs> And uh, they face third down and nine right now. Penalty puts the ball back on the 38 yard the penalty line. situation is pretty even. Covey up over the center this time. Two setbacks. They need nine yards for a first down. Covey back to throw. Rushes on. Sets up. Finally gets it off. Has a man down there. Oh, he led him too much. That's the third or fourth time in this game. Cutler was down at the 10 yard line. He's telling the officials he was held up. Fred Stromile covering on the play. And Cutler was wide open. I think what Cutler's telling the official is, hey, when I went to make my break, the guy held on to me as I cut back to the outside. That slowed up the timing a little bit. So the timing was off, and Sean overthrew him. And I don't know if you'll be able to see it in, in the top of your screen here on the replay, but uh, what Cutler's going to do is he's going to go down, he's going to run to the post to get his guy turned inside and break back out to the corner. And when he went to break back to the corner, there was the defensive back grabbed a hold of him because he was about to fall down. Here's Thompson punting, trying to kick it out of bounds down in the coffin corner, but he did not. He kicks it into the end zone. So Brigham Young University has stopped in the first offensive series of the third quarter, hurt themselves with a couple of penalties, and Texas will take over first and 10 on the Horns' 20-yard line. Well, they knocked, uh, what, about a little over four minutes off the uh, clock on that series blame, but they'd like to get in the end zone. You know, they moved the ball real well that time, Jay, but just those, those couple of motion penalties hurt them. 
when they were so close again because Cutler was open. Okay, Texas, first and 10 on the 20. Let's see what they can do offensively here in the third quarter. Kelly at quarterback. He'll pass on first down. Cougars put some pressure on him, and uh, they sack him. Is that going to be real to pass? It is. He got rid of that one just as he was hit by Chad Robinson. And the officials say there was a man out there. It's ruled an incomplete pass. Yeah, I, at first I look, it looked and it looked like intentional grounding, but Wilson was just five yards behind when Kelly threw the ball. Good pressure on the quarterback that time. He drops back in the pocket. Actually, he doesn't have pressure real early. He's got plenty of time. There's good coverage in the secondary, and then the, uh, the protection breaks down. Just off your screen on the right, Wilson was standing, so it was not an intentional grounding type call. Second and ten for the Longhorns. Kelly gives them the draw this time. Hey, they drop him for a loss. Wilson, Pat Wilson, the ball carrier, Dwayne Johnson, who's in developing into an excellent linebacker for BYU, knocked him off his feet. You know, the, the whole left side of the BYU defensive uh, front did a good job because they got penetration, caused Wilson to have to go back to the outside, and then Dwayne Johnson wasn't going to let him go anywhere from there. A loss of three yards on the play. It is third and 13 for the University of Texas, and they're on their own 17-yard line. Cougars ahead 26. Been a pretty good defensive battle for the last uh, quarter or so. That's that late handoff, and he does not quite make the first down. No, it looked like the quarterback still had the ball, then he Drop handed it up in front Norris, to the uh, running back, Bob and Davis, Bob Davis stayed with him and knocked Norris down. So they're short of the yardage for the first down. As you mentioned, Jay, he came around and reached around the back. Some real nifty ball handling. And it's tough. See the, you can see the defensive line still thought the quarterback had the ball. The first long run we've seen Norris had, but came up about Alex two yards short of the first down. Into punts is Alex Waits. Average nearly 43 Bobby yards a punt in the first half. O'Brien back deep for Brigham Young. Here's the snap. And the kick. Cougars put some pressure on. He kicks it over towards the sidelines, and good roll for Texas. That's going to roll down inside the 10-yard line. I thought it was going to go out of bounds. It did not. Great punt by Waits that time, and they really put the Cougars in the hole. Tex Mercer back there covering that football, and BYU, rather than operating up around the 25, they're going to be down around the five-yard line with 9-10 to go in the third period. Line of scrimmage for the Cougars from Brigham Young, the six-yard line, their own six. By Waits, that was a 66-yard punt, as it had quite a Texas roll. You know, Waits, I've, I've noticed as he's punted the ball, he very rarely punts it down the middle of the field. Have you noticed that? He always punts to a sideline. It's very difficult to return the ball from the sideline. Even if you do catch it, there's a good chance it'll go out of bounds and have no return. First down, Brigham Young on their own six-yard line mm -hmm. as they try to get a little operating room here in the third period. Covey fakes a handoff. He's going to throw in first down, throws way downfield, and it is incomplete. Again, he let his man too much. That was Doman on a sprint at the 45-yard line. Boy, Doman really showing his speed on that one. He just broke away from the defensive back while the ball was in the air. Had that been a little shorter, a little less on it, that would have been another six. Irish Lewis covering, but Doman had him beaten that time. So it's second and ten on the six-yard line for the Cougars at BYU. And they certainly didn't play conservatively that time. They went for broke. Second and ten. Covey throwing out of the end zone. Here's his pass. Almost intercepted. Knocked down intended for Macbeth. Covering was Paul Bierman who knocked it down. As a quarterback, you always kind of feel a little bit uncomfortable as you drop back into the end zone. You get back there, and it's on, it's on the back of your mind, hey, I'm standing in the end zone, and, and it's tough to concentrate on throwing it to the receiver sometimes because you're always worried about getting sacked back there for a safety. Great coverage on the replay there. You saw uh, Paul Bierman. By Paul Bierman, the, the corner for Texas. That was good coverage. Bierman, a very versatile athlete. He can play any of the defensive uh, back positions. Third and 10, BYU on the six-yard line. Covey looking things over. Drops back to throw from the end zone. Sets up and does throw. And it's incomplete. Intended for Cutler on the sidelines. So BYU's going to have to punt out of the end zone. Bubba Jakes covering on that particular play. Here comes the Cougar punting team. 8.55 to go in the third quarter. And field position has changed quickly here in the third quarter. The Cougars had the uh, Texans back on their own 17-yard line. But that 66-yard punt has placed it at the other end of the field. 
Here's Thompson to kick from eight yards deep in his own end zone. No rush. He gets the kick away, and it's a good one. All the way back to the 40-yard line. Fielded there. They'll try to get outside. Have a good block there. Going down the sidelines to the 40. Down to the 30. And pulled out of bounds about the 12-yard line. He may have been out of bounds upfield. A good punt return that time by the Texans, and they're threatening to score right now. Kirk Davis for BYU forced him out of bounds, and what a turnaround. And that was another one of those cases, Jay, where Pat Thompson just jacked the punt. You watch, and notice there's nobody around the receiver as he catches the ball on the replay. That's because Pat Thompson punted it so far, he outpunted the coverage. And Texas has a nice wall set up of uh, blocking for the return man, and uh, he makes a nice run. His foot goes out of bounds on the 18, or he even gets right there. He stepped on the line, and the official made a good call. 54-yard punt, 42-yard return. And Texas with the football on first down. They gain nothing. The line of scrimmage is the 18-yard line. Nice tackle by Chad Robinson for Brigham Young. So we're halfway through the third quarter. Brigham Young leading by 14 points, 20 to 6. But the University of Texas has a threat going thanks to another fine punt return. They gain two, second and eight on the Brigham Young 16-yard line. And the crowd getting involved in the action, trying to help the team out. Here's Kelly to throw. The pressure's on. Gets it off. It's caught at the six-yard line. Nice catch. That'll be a first down. We got it down to Kerry Cash, who's a sophomore from uh, San Antonio, one of a, a, a couple of twins on the team. So they have first and goal. Rodney Rice, the tackler. First and goal on the Cougars' six-yard line. They do not have a touchdown in the game so far. On that replay, the, the receiver just kind of ran, pressured his man to the inside and then broke back to the outside. Ran a nice little route, a little five-yard route. Quarterback rolled that way and put the ball on. A real nice play. So Texas doing their darndest to get back in the ball game right here in the third period. Kelly, I think there was a mix-up that time. He turned around. He wanted to do something differently with the football and uh, simply was not there. On that one, Kelly made the mistake. It was obvious. He turned a pitch to the left. The entire offensive line was blocking the play to go to the right, and both backs went to the right. You'll see here. Kelly turns around. It's like, hey, wait a minute. Where is everybody? He went the wrong way. At that point, all you can do is tuck it away and get what you can. But uh, he thought the play was called for a sweep to the left. The whole rest of the team knew it was to the right. A big Tim Clark for BYU dropped on it. Second and goal from back on the seven-yard line. Kelly gives him a handoff. Tripped up as he gets to about the five-yard line by Regan Hansen for Brigham Young. So it's going to be third and goal for BYU. I'll tell you, Jay, it's a good thing Regan Hansen made that shoestring tackle because there was a seam there. I believe if uh, Regan doesn't make the tackle, he goes for six on that one. So we have third and goal for the University of Texas on the Brigham Young six-yard line. Cougars leading 20 to six. Crab trying to help him out. Listen to that roar. It's the pitch to the right side. Hit at the line of scrimmage down at the three-yard line. So they stopped him. That was uh, Troy Jones. No, oh, check that. I guess it was Norris. Yeah. Darren Norris. They pitched it to him, but Troy Long met him. And they're going to use the field goal unit. Texas surprising me again, Jay. Remember the last time they were threatening to score? They threw th two balls to the short side of the field. Last, They just threw a ball to the short side of the field here. Now they try to run a sweep into the short side of the field. Uh, they're not using the wide open field that they have to the far side of the field on the, on the left of the offense. Uh, surprising. Easier to cover the play into the boundary. Another good defensive stand. Here's Clements to try the field goal. He's made two and missed one. And his kick is no good. He missed it. He kicked it off to the left. There's also a flag down on the field, however. And Texas is applauding as if the penalty's on Brigham Young. I think they may have hit the kicker. Let's wait and see. It looked like the BYU defense had stopped him, but now a penalty may give Texas another chance. Here's the call, a very, very important call. Now they're saying the field goal is no good. Let's see if they hit the uh, the kicker here. He hit the kicker, but uh, they're waving off the penalty. 
talking things over. We don't uh, see either team really applauding right now. On the replay, you can see that he did run into the kicker. The question is, did anybody get a hand on the ball? If they got a hand on the ball, you can hit the kicker. If, if you don't get a hand on the ball, then you're not allowed to run into the kicker like that. The officials are still talking things over. And uh, both teams seem a little confused as to what's going on out there. Now maybe we'll get the call. Here we go. They're running into the kicker on the defense, half the distance to the goal, still fourth down. Oh boy, a big break for the University of Texas then. Running into the kicker, so that gives them first and goal inside the five-yard line. And just when the def BYU defense had stopped him for the second time in a situation like this in the game, forced him to try a field goal, and they missed it. Now they're going to go for the score because it goes down to the one-yard line. Just inside the two, they're going to go for the score. Big play in this ball game. Kelly with the ball. He's still got it himself. Throws into the end zone. Knocked away by Brigham Young, so they stopped him anyway. That was Scott Peterson for BYU, but you got to give a lot of credit on the BYU line. They did not go for the fake. Boy, what a mo momentum uh, situation for BYU. He had a little uh, scuffling around out there among some of the players after that play, but Brigham Young has stopped him. On the replay, they just tried to fake a ball up the middle, tried to hold those linebackers, and they blocked the tight end down and the release from the outside, but Scott Peterson wasn't going to have any part of the fake and uh, made a great play knocking it down. He hangs onto the ball. They get it out on the 20. They don't, so they'll have it on the one, but they stopped him again. BYU leads 20 to 6. The Cougars with the football then on about the one and a half yard line. So they're operating out of their own end zone, trying to get a little running room right here. Running play, and they barely get back out of the end zone as they use the draw action. Kind of a gutty call out of the Certainly end zone where you, where you have a delay play where you're back in the end zone. You get any kind of penetration, you get a safety on that kind of play. Big Ken Hackamack making the stop. Clock running with 5.18 to go in the third quarter. And uh, Blaine, the Cougars would have to be a little leery of a punt right now. Twice, uh, Texas has run one back. One apparent touchdown, a penalty cost them that. And here they almost set up a score with a good punt return. Second down and still 10 for the one and a half yard line for BYU. Running play, that's Salido. Salido works his way out over the five to about the seven or eight yard line. As you mentioned, Jay, they're just trying to get a little bit of breathing room, just straight off tackle play there to Salido. Well, he really does slash through. He reminds me of uh, a back that used to be here by the name of Vaisekahema, the way he slashes through the line and turns his body sideways to get through the small holes. Watch here, go through, see how he turns sideways and makes it through that little seam? Bobby Rhodes tackled him. We have a Cougar lineman who's injured on the play. They're checking on him, so there's a break in the action with 4.43 to go in the third quarter. Brigham Young leads 20 to 6. We'll be back in just a moment. Brigham Young University has third and five from their own 12-yard line. Check that, from their own seven-yard line. Now they send them back in the huddle again, so we're not quite ready to go. 4.43 left to go in quarter number three. Brigham Young 20, Texas 6. I was thinking, uh, Blaine, two very, very good defensive stands by BYU against Texas in this game. You they did the same thing in the second half against Wyoming last week. You gotta, they're really tightening up. you got to give a lot of credit to that defense. Texas has been knocking on the door, but BYU hasn't let them go through. Third down call. Covey wants to throw for a first down. Does throw for a half of that second. Too long. It's incomplete. Would have been enough for the first down, but he overthrew his man. Paul Bierman covering, and the Cougars will have to punt it again. Pat Thompson in there to kick. He can kick it a long ways, but Texas has been able to set up some pretty good punt returns in this game. Let's see what kind of kick he gets, Jay. You notice the two real long returns that they got were on fantastic kicks where Thompson actually outkicked the coverage. Nobody can get down that far. That's how far he kicked the ball. He's kicking for about eight yards deep in the end zone. Snap a little low, but he has it. Here's his kick. He paused just long enough to uh, help his uh, teammates get downfield. And he kicks it out of bounds up near the 45-yard line. So he kicked away from the receivers that time. It'll go out of bounds at midfield. And Texas will take over near the 50-yard line. 4.17 left to go. In the uh, third quarter of the football game. And right now it's turning into a defensive struggle. 
on the 17th Brigham Young plays another Texas team here Texas El Paso in a very important WAC conference game. There's a handoff up the middle and there's no gain in that one. The late handoff to Darren Norris. Chad Robinson led the defensive play. Well, he took a couple of shots that time right at the line of scrimmage. When Norris is uh, being treated roughly by the BYU defense today, he he's normally gets 5.2 yards a carry. And the game last year against BYU, he had a great game. Had over six yards a carry in that game. And boy, he just has nothing up the middle tonight. Like some of the Texas people think he's really been overshadowed by Eric Metcalf. Metcalf is out there. He would be the star of this team. Second and ten. Kelly to throw. Coming after him from behind. The rush is on. They sack him this time. All the way back to the 45-yard line. Chad Robinson was dogging him from the start on that play. Time BYU brought both outside linebackers. And uh, Chad Robinson came from the backside watch. He's going to get picked up by one of the guards fanning out to try to pick him up. And he just runs right by him with his good speed. And Regan Hansen comes from his middle middle backer position and comes over and uh, the two of them put the stop on him. Third and 17 for Texas. Kelly ready. Straight back to throw this time. Throws it over the middle. Incomplete. Rodney Rice covering for BYU. Intended for <laughs> Their game breaker, Tony Jones. Kelly and Bass, for number four, Tony Jones. There's also a flag there. The red play. Play of game before the snap on the offense. Still third down. Well, that's twice, Jay, in this game where they've called a dead ball delay a game foul. And the, evidently the officials haven't blown the whistle loud enough or it's too loud in the stadium where they continue on and, and run the play. It's happened uh, several times in the game. I suppose not unusual for a first game of the year. But it costs the uh, Texans five more yards, so they're back to their own 41-yard line now, where it is third down and 21, maybe 22. And we've got a Texas player injured. They're helping him off the field. That is Tony Jones. Tony's shaken up on the play. Seems to be, uh, does not appear as if it would be a serious injury, however. Probably just got his bell rung a little bit. Rodney Rice was step for step with him and put a good hit on him just as he touched the ball. I'm surprised that Jones doesn't get hurt more often. He is the smallest guy out there on the field, probably in every game he plays in. 5'7", 140. Uh, you know, I would imagine his body could take too much punishment. Okay, third down, 22 for Texas. They use the uh, draw, delayed handoff. He's to the outside and knocked out of bounds right in front of the Cougar bench at the 48-yard line. Four around the left side. There was a flag back on the BYU 42 that was thrown real late. Have a flag on the play. A little talking over there in front of the Cougar bench. The Texas team says it's on BYU if that's a late hit. Personal foul it is. It's a personal foul on Brigham Young. Chad Robinson made the tackle on that play, but the Cougars would have forced him into a punting situation, but with the help of a personal foul. a personal foul on the defense during the run, 15 yards from the end of the run, automatic first down. Boy, that's a big penalty. Boy, Chad Robinson having a good game. Uh, all the linebackers for BYU have been having good games, really all over the field doing a good job. But that penalty, that's a big penalty for them. Yep, they'd have gotten the football back right there. But as it is, now Texas has the ball in uh, BYU territory down at the 37-yard line. Defense have been playing so well. Kelly, a quick out. Intercepted. Rodney Rice to the 40, to the 45, to the 50, down to the 40, down to the 30, down to the 20. He's going to take it all the way. Wow, what a turnaround for Brigham Young. There is not a flag on the field. Rodney Rice just set up the quarterback so well on that. He knew that. He read it all the way. He knew that that out was coming. He just sat there, waited till the quarterback threw the ball, broke in front of the receiver, and it was over. 65-yard return. Talk about speed. He outran some men. He lulled Kelly to sleep. He kind of sat back. He knew that Jones was going to run it out, and they just cut right in front of him as soon as uh, Kelly let go of the ball. And with Rodney Rice's great speed, nobody's going to catch him going down that sideline. His second interception of the year. There was a point last year when he was leading the nation in interceptions before he got hurt, and he was still one of the best in the nation and in the run. I think that uh, Rodney is one of the best defensive backs they've had at BYU in a long time. He's outstanding, particularly as a cover man, Jay. He's, he's one of the finest cover men I've ever seen. He can cover man to man. 
anybody. We're talking about Tony Jones, a guy that is a world-class sprinter, and Rodney Rice has been step for step with him all day long today. BYU might get called with unsportsmanlike conduct here, but the touchdown stands. The dead ball, unsportsmanlike conduct on the offense. Penalty will be assessed on the kickoff. That had to do with, I think, too many men running onto the field after Rice scored the touchdown. Sure that's what it was. It's 26-6 the score right now. The way Kaufman's kicking it, it might not uh, make any difference anyway. Uh, the coaches will tell you that one thing Rice does is he re reacts to the ball as quick as any defensive back they've had in a long time. Here's Kaufman to try the extra point. Thompson holding the kick is good. And so... With 2.16 to go in the football game, it's Brigham Young University 27 and the University of Texas 6. So Kaufman will kick from the 20-yard line. Uh, Texas has two men lined up at the 15-yard line, expecting the kick about that point. Norris is back there, and also number 17 is Willie Mac Garza, who's only a freshman. They say he's a great one. And the crowd really involved. They're having a lot of fun. BYU leading 27 to 6. 2-16 left to play in the third quarter. Here's Kaufman's kick. He kicks it back to the 11-yard line. Feel it there. Up to the 20, to the 25, to the 30. Knocked off his feet at the 30-yard line. Good open field tackle by Rocky Beagle. The freshman linebacker from Wisconsin. That's a pretty good name for a football player. You know, his first name is Rockney, and they call him Rocky. Rockney? Rockney, after Canute Rockney. And there's a player on the Texas team. I'd have to look it up. It's Rocky, who is it? Who all, Rocky. I can't, I can't find it quickly, but he, he goes by Rocky, and his first name is also Rockney. First down play. They lose yardage. That's Norris. Real mix up in the back there. Norris and the quarterback Kelly ran into each other at the start of the play. Pete Harston tackled him. There is a flag down. Let's see what that is. Rocky Allen on the uh, <laughs> Texas team. His name is also Rockney. Yeah, that truly is a football. Here's the replay. See the thing when things are going bad for you, they go real bad. You had the backs and the quarterback start running into each other. Uh, really messes up the play and allows penetration to get in there. But the Cougars are called with a face mask penalty. Five yards, so it's the inadvertent. You know, Texas has some, mass penalty. had some big breaks penalty tonight, Jay. You know, they had great punt returns and had good field position most of the night, particularly in this half. They haven't been able to cash in on it at all. BYU defense has been tough. They've sent in their flex end now. This is Jarek Battle, number 40. He caught a big pass in the first half. Yeah, they split two men wide to the left, one to the right. Kelly back to pass. Throws it over the middle. Incomplete. Intended for Jones. Covering back there for Brigham Young is Mitchell. Brian Mitchell, who's only a sophomore. He's from Waco, Texas. So here's one of the young men from Texas playing against the Texans. And he was a high school sprinter. Redshirted for BYU last year, and they're counting on him for some big things. I understand he's a great cover man as well, Jay. He uh, has real good feet back there and able to cover man to man very well. A minute 42 to go in the third quarter. Brigham Young leading 27 to 6. Running play. The ball is bobbled, but the running back hangs on to it. Norris gets to the 45-yard line. Well, he was juggling that football as he went downfield. You know, Jay, as I watched that play, it looked like Norris was expecting a handoff. And then look on the replay. He, he got a pitch. He, was, he had his hands ready for a handoff, and he got a You're pitch right. right in the chest. I think Kelly's been uh, making a few mental mistakes out there in the last few drives, Jay. Well, Bob Davis didn't make a mental mistake. He made the tackle. Texas started at the 20, the 18, the BYU 18, the BYU 48, and the Texas 37, and they have not scored. Third down and three. High formation. Kelly pitches it back to Norris. Norris trying to get outside. He's going to make it. He's around the corner and pulls his way down to the 43-yard line. That time, he showed his ability. Scott Peterson tackled him. Aaron Norris sweeping the left end. What made that play Scott possible Peters, was they were able to five. cut the linebacker and allow him to get outside on that one. He's got some good speed when he turns that corner, and he's big enough and compact enough. Norris getting down to the 43-yard line. Here's a, here's a real interesting thing. You know, we talked Texas. about the football tradition at Texas. Here you can see the Texas Longhorns have won three national championships. 
that's quite a tribute to their football program. 63, 69, and 70, back-to-back -back national championships. Wayne, go back to what you said a moment, moment ago, and it looked like Norris expected a handoff. They seem a little bit out of sync in the back. They really right? are. You know, if things start to go wrong, it can it can really go wrong for you. It starts to affect you mentally. There's a nice hole up the middle, and a gain of about eight yards. And they've got a new man. That's Chris Samuels in a fullback. Delayed handoff to number 23, from San Antonio. Samuel. Uh, tackled by Chad Robinson. He can play Robinson, either fullback or tailback. He's very quick, and they say he's a future star. Gets down to the 35. It's like he had good foot speed there and a good cutting ability. They've got so many running backs who are very fast, who weigh right around 190 to 210 pounds. They're not real tall either. You'll notice, like Darren Norris. Geez, at 5'9, he weighs 202. That's a real compact package. Seven seconds showing on the clock, and then they stop the clock, and the officials confer. Well, if we got a timeout or what they're doing. Texas has second down three for a first down on the Brigham Young 35-yard line. The only teams that Texas did not score a touchdown against last year were Oklahoma and Auburn. Well, there's the end of the third quarter as the time does run off the clock after three complete quarters of play. Brigham Young University 27, the University of Texas 6. Jay Monson, Blaine Fowler, BYU football, fourth quarter opens up, and the Texas team on first down gets nothing. They hand it off up the middle to Chris Samuels, and the middle of the BYU defensive line waiting for him. All of them in on that stuff. Right now, defensively for Brigham Young, Rodney Rice is out of the game. They said he had muscle spasms. Maybe that's from running that one back 70 yards, but they say he'll be back in shortly. Here in the replay, you're going to see what's happened every time Texas has tried to go up the middle with their fullback. The BYU nose tackle, Tim Knight, and uh, the whole center of the BYU line has had too good a penetration tonight to allow Texas to run up the middle. Third down and four, Kelly to throw for it. Lofts it down the sideline, incomplete. Jones had it momentarily, juggled it, and dropped it, covered by Bergeson. He may have been out of bounds anyway when he got the football. It's hard to tell. They just tried to put, use their speed and run him down the sideline, loft it up and let him run under it. Uh, he uh, showed some good speed there, but let's see if he catches it. If he, if he was out of bounds when he juggled the ball, doesn't do you any good to get open if he can't catch it. Here he goes. He breaks away from the receiver. Oh, he was, he in, was bounds. in bounds. He was in bounds when the ball got to him. Had he right. caught that, it would have been a good game. We've got a BYU player injured. Well, Patterson was in. The big guy who broke his hand last week against Wyoming in on the defensive line, but he's being helped off the field right now, and he's limping a bit. Well, I tell you, that takes some courage to play with a broken hand. They were going to test him before the game to see if he could play with the pain. In the third quarter stats, you can see uh, BYU dominating in the in the uh, total yardage. Texas really moving the ball pretty well, though, with 253 yards in total offense. But the problem is they're not moving the ball into the end zone. Fourth and four. They went back to throw from it, and Kelly was sacked by Chad Robinson. And Chad has had one great football game. He's the junior linebacker from American Fork High School, played at Ricks College for a year, and then transferred to BYU. He's got real good foot speed, Jay. He's very quick and makes a lot of tackles all over the field. Able to get to the quarterback. Here he is, right, number nine, right in your screen. He runs around the backside, beats the man, goes around him, and gets the quarterback from behind. Good Kelly, job. Kelly did not see him coming. So Brigham Young's offense is on the field. First and 10 for the Cougars on their own 40-yard line. They're leading 27 to 6. Macbeth, tight end in motion. Covey back to pass. Lots of time. Throws it incomplete. Tended for Matt Bellini, but Bellini was pretty well covered by a linebacker, Bobby Rhodes. Play number 67, Bobby Rhodes. Warren Wheat for BYU was injured in the last series downfield. For the Cougars, let's see if he's back in there. I might have to eat my words from the first half, Jay. You know, I said that it's not often that a uh, linebacker can run man for man with Bellini, but what I did just see there is two linebackers covered him. They covered him inside out, and the outside linebacker took him and he broke to the outside. And he is back in the game for Brigham Young. <coughs> Covey gives on the draw this time to Whittingham, his fullback. He's back to the line of scrimmage, and that's all. So they'll face third and ten from the 40-yard line. Clock running with 14 minutes left to play in a football Bobby game, and Bobby Rhodes again the tackler. A week from Saturday, Brigham Young right here at noon against Texas El Paso in a very important league game. 
There you see the stats on Covey, 13 out of 35. Not a real good percentage today, but uh, some big yardage piled up. Covey on third, rushes on, hangs it downfield, and a flag goes down. He led his man just a little bit too much again. They got to work on that, I guess, this week, Blaine, because that was Doman. Doman stretched out, had it, but there is a flag in the backfield. Might be pass interference. Fred Stromile covering. They're not going to see a lot of teams this year, Jay, that try to cover them the way Texas covered them tonight with the man-to-man -man stuff. We won't, we won't see uh, wide receivers streaking down the middle wide open like that every week. Um, but uh, Sean goes back, reads the defense well, no free safety in the middle of the field, tries to go to the deep post to Doman. It just overthrows him a little bit. Look how wide open he is on that one. This penalty might be on BYU. We have pass interference against the offense. It is. Lost it down. Fourth down. And that, that wasn't Doman, Jay, that caused interference. It was the other receiver that was underneath, ran into a guy while the ball was in the air. So they called it back there a little bit further. Texas's drives in the second half. First drive ended in a punt. Second down, four downs and stop. Interception on the third drive and stop and downs on the fourth drive. Cougars have uh, the punter in now. Loss of down on that pa offensive pass interference. So Thompson will punt from his own 10-yard line. He has it. They go after him. They do not get the punt, nor him. And he hangs up a pretty good one. Kicks it toward the sidelines. Taken at the 20. They've got him hemmed in over there. And knock him out of bounds at the 28. That was a good punt by Thompson. There's a flag down back at the 25-yard line. Mark Neal covering for Brigham Young. That flag, Jay, was thrown right at the snap of the ball, so we'll probably have some kind of motion penalty or something like that. You're correct. So motion penalty against Brigham Young University. They'll have to kick it again, and Tom uh, Thompson got off a good one that time. 56-yard punt. Won't count. A lot of penalties in this game. First game of the year for the University of Texas. We have an illegal formation against the offense. Five-yard penalty. Still fourth down. They must have had too many people uh, in the backfield. Not enough guys up on the line of scrimmage on that one. So that's why they threw it right at the snap of the ball. So Brigham Young will have to punt it again, and Thompson will drop back to his five-yard line. His foot's played an important role in this game for BYU. But without a penalty, there was one run back, one punt return. It would have been a touchdown, except for clipping. So Thompson punting from the five-yard line. A little low, fumbles it, he's going to run it. Now will he kick it? He throws it downfield, it's caught at the 30. Now a flag, the flags go down all over the field. So the snap was low, Thompson completed the pass. You'll probably have ineligible receivers downfield. Completed to Norman Nixon. Dixon. Oh, probably eight of them, Jay. <laughs> Everybody was down covering the punt, and they threw the pass, so all the interior linemen were down covering the punt. Every one of them was an ineligible receiver down there. So they're going to turn this into a, a tough way to win the ball game. 13-12 to go in the football game. I don't. Did he get enough for the first down? Any well, I don't think he did. He downfield no. on the offense. Penalty is declined. First down this way. So Texas will get the ball in excellent field position right now. The BYU defense has really been stuffing them here in the second half. But now they've got a uh, pretty good field position for a shot at scoring. It'll be down at the 35-yard line, and Thompson will get credit for a pass completion. He was a quarterback in high school, and Texas will refuse the penalty and allow the play to stand, taking it to the 35-yard line. You know, Jay, you mentioned they have good field position. They really have had great field position all, particularly in the second half. And they've not been able to capitalize on that. First down, Texas. On the Cougar 35-yard line. Kelly gives on the draw to Norris. They wrap him up in the line of scrimmage. He gets two. They're watching for that. 27-6. Bring him young leading. Is that Robinson again? Chad Robinson into the side. Tackle made by Bob Davis and Chad Robinson have a flag on the play. You know, Jay, you mentioned there really have been a lot of penalties. It's been sloppy in that sense. As of the end of the third quarter, BYU had 12 penalties for 96 yards. Texas, seven penalties for 55 yards. I mean, that's, that's a substantial amount of penalties for a single game. Jay. And Texas is going to face one right now. 12 on BYU and seven on Texas. Then. That was at the end of the third quarter. So uh, there's been an, another three. Illegal formation. Gets the offense, only six men on the line of scrimmage, still first down. Puts it back on the 40-yard line, first and 15. That's the fourth time we've had that call tonight. Must be in the book this year. Yeah. You know, we haven't even mentioned it. Well, we will after this play. First down play. Kelly, no, he got away from the tackler. Looked like they had him. 
Now they've got him again. He flips the pass off. It's incomplete. Boy, BYU had him uh, wrapped up, but he escaped. They almost had a sack. Chad Robinson on top of him. You know, Blaine, we should have mentioned it this year. You can score as the defense on an extra point. Oh, you New mean like if the defense intercepts the pass, they can go back and score. Blocks the try and picks it up or catches a fumble in the air and runs it downfield. The defense gets two points. Wow. I didn't even, I wasn't aware of that. That's interesting. New rule this year. You see year. Tim, uh, Tim Clark in there. He was off balance when he tried to get the quarterback. And then Chad Robinson been all over the field tonight, doing a great job in there to finish him off. Second and 15. Kelly back to pass this time. Flips it down the middle. Intercepted by Scott Peterson. Scott went up high at the 21 yard line and he's a big guy. He can get up in the air. He's 6'4", senior. Has the interception. There's a flag down up where the ball was thrown. Real poorly thrown ball that time, Jay. He tried to hit uh, Jones on a corner pattern. Went down to the post to the corner. Scott Peterson was just back playing free safety, playing back in the middle. And uh, threw it way over the receiver's head back to Peterson. The penalty was on Texas. It's refused. Second interception of the game for the Cougars. Kelly dropped back. He has good time. He's got good, you know. He didn't have a real, Jones was not really very open, but he overthrew him. Way behind him and over his head by about 10 yards. And Scott Peterson was back there playing center field waiting for the ball. 12.48 left in this football game with Brigham, Brigham Young on top, 27 to 6. And the Cougar offense back on the field on their own 21-yard line. Covey at quarterback up over the football. running play right up the middle like to keep the clock going now for a while that's Salido slipping up the middle for a couple of yards Mike Salido, the ball tackled carrier. by Britt Hager Michael Bryan, the ball this young man can play for about anybody he's outstanding middle linebacker Tackle maybe in the NFL Hager, yeah, I'm sure he will play in number 12 and a half left in the football Rocky game Salido gained three that time three and a half second down a little over six yards to go for a first down Covey waiting his back to pass pretty good protection throws it over the middle nice catch at the 40 45 50 and into Texas territory pretty good grab that time going up high and getting it was Doman the freshman from Salt Lake Fred Stromile covering that was a nice grab and he really timed his jump perfectly to be able to snag that ball what's gonna happen is Covey's gonna go back Doman's going to come across on a crossing route against that man-to-man -man defense. You saw him cross with the other receiver. Just enough, just two steps on the defender. That's all you need if you have a perfect throw and a good catch like that. Nice play, nice crossing route run by the Cougars. Doman had an older brother play as a wide receiver for BYU several years ago. First and ten, Brigham Young on the Texas 46-yard line. Macbeth goes in motion. That's an inside handoff to Whittingham, the fullback. And Whittingham pulls his way to the 40. He's a tough young man to knock down. Roger Fritcher hit him first of all. Clock running with 11 and a half to play. And the Cougars up by 21 points. Big win for the WAC last week in intersectional play was Hawaii defeating Iowa. And Iowa's ranked right up there. I think they were sixth with yeah. that one, Paul. Cougars have the football. Gained only a yard on that one. Second down. Covey at quarterback. Fakes the draw. Still with the ball. Passes. Incomplete. Tended for Cutler, but he uh, threw it a little short. Texas is warming up a new quarterback. Mark Murdoch, a freshman from Round Rock, Texas, is warming up on the sidelines right now. Here we got a shot, Jay. It looks like they're over on the sideline working on Rodney Rice. Uh, they originally told us he had some kind of cramping problem, but they're paying some, some attention to him. Maybe we'll be able to get word uh, what the problem is with Rodney. Okay, BYU with the ball. Third down and ten. Covey fires downfield to Cutler, but it was out of bounds. He led him too much again. A lot of pressure on Covey that time. They brought uh, linebackers and... Uh, may have had a late hit or a hold. Bass with the flag back in that area usually means either a late hit or a hold. Texas linemen are applauding, so it's apparently a hold on BYU. Let's see if we can pick up the penalty on this. You see him coming back. He's got a lot of good pressure. 
hard to see a hold on that one, but he got, got the ball off as, as best as he could in the pressure. Well, field position changes quickly in favor of BYU because they will be punting now, but Thompson will be kicking from his own 40 yard line instead of his own five yard line with 10 50 left in the ball game. Twenty-seven six. Here's the kick. Got it away. Hangs it up. They signal for a fair catch. It bounces down around the ten, and BYU's got it covered. They're going to cover it inside the five-yard line, and that's one of the few times in this game where they've really uh, placed Texas in the hole in a situation like that. BYU leading twenty-seven to six. University of Texas in the hole right now with 10.40 to go in the game. They're trailing Brigham Young by 21 points. They have not been able to get the ball in the end zone against the Cougars. And they'll have the ball first and 10 on their own three-yard line right now. Fine defensive effort. We've been talking about Rodney Rice uh, being injured. He's on the field right now. I think it was just a cramp thing as, we, as our preliminary indication was. New quarterback in. Murdoch to throw out of the end zone. Here's his pass. Incomplete. A little bit underthrown that time. And Rice covering on the play for Brigham Young. Tried to get it to uh, Curtis Govan, a junior. It's an incomplete pass. Murdoch, 6'2", 190 freshman, drop back quarterback. He's from Round Rock, Texas, had a very good spring, redshirted last year. They say he just needs some maturity to be a pretty good quarterback. I noticed, Jay, they had a close-up of, of the young quarterback there. He's got all the plays on his wrist and wristbands. Rice goes back out of the game. I think he's uh, had a muscle problem in his leg. Murdoch to throw out of the end zone, throws it quickly, and it's incomplete. They almost had him for a safety that time. Unloaded it right over the middle. Covering for Brigham Young, Regan Hansen. As we mentioned, Jay, earlier, only five players out of the 115 uh, players in the Texas Longhorn program, only five are not from the state of Texas. So they really go for those homegrown athletes. As you mentioned, uh, Blaine, there are a lot of good football players in the high schools of Texas. BYU is recruiting a lot in Texas right now. They've got some good athletes out of Texas. Third down and 10 for Texas. Murdoch out of the end zone again. Here's his pass. Incomplete. Tanner for Goban. Covering was Brian Mitchell for BYU, who's from Texas. Brian Mitchell was actually a step ahead of the receiver on that one. He looked like he was the intended receiver. Great coverage by Mitchell on that one. So the Cougar defensive unit comes off the field, and BYU's played some great defense the last couple of weeks. Here's the punt. O'Brien looking, lets it bounce in front of him. There's a flag that goes down. Back near the 40-yard line, and the ball rolls down at the 37-yard line. Tex Mercer covering for the University of Texas, but there is a flag down on the play. Let's see what this call is. They might say that BYU had too many players on the field. There was one young man hustling to get off the field. And I don't know if he made it before the snap. They snapped the ball while he was still five yards inside of the uh, uh, the boundary. And they called out. You know, that's a tough penalty, Jay. The guy's not even to participate in the play, has nothing to do with it. He's running off the field, yet yet it costs you. And the flag was not thrown. Down. It was thrown upfield after the play was over. I, I watched the referee that threw the flag. He was counting players, and then he threw the flag. Oh, okay. They're talking to the University of Texas. Trying to remember back on that one. Too many players on the field. Is that an automatic first down? Oh. I know BYU was hurt by this in a game a couple of years ago. So there's, uh, there's two calls. There's illegal man on the field. Too many men on the field. Then there's illegal participation. You know, if there's 12 guys, it's a more serious problem. There's 12 guys, and they're all out there covering or participating. This guy was on his way off the field. So well, they're coming. It's... They're coming back downfield with the Texas team, and now the officials are conferring upfield. A little huddle there. A lot of time has been spent in this game with the officials talking plays over. 10-17 left to play. BYU ahead by 21. Let's try to look in the uh, book here and see what that signal he gave was. No penalty. Oh, now First they're going to wave it way. off. They're going to wave it off and say no penalty. 
the BYU coaches were complaining. Now the Texas coaches are out on the field. They want to talk to the officials about that. But they've waved it off. There's no penalty call. So Brigham Young University will have the ball near midfield. Well, the uh, call that they did signal was a substitution infraction. Brigham Young University with the football. They have it first and 10 on the Texas 37-yard line. We have 10-17 to play, and the Cougars lead 27-6. They've given up two field goals defensively. The only scores of the game for Texas. Fakes a uh, handoff, still with the ball as Covey, bootlegging it. Down to the 35, down to the 30, down to the 25. Out of bounds at the 20-yard line. the weak side linebacker to really commit uh, to the fake. You know, we've seen a few where he, he hasn't committed. You watch uh, on the right near screen, 46 goes for the fake. It allows Covey to get outside. The receivers are pretty well covered, but he's got a lot of green grass between, between he and any defender. He turns it up, makes a good run out of good game. It's a first down run for Sean Covey for Brigham Young University. He's clotheslined as he gets to the out-of-bound line. He get out of bounds line. He got it to the 20-yard line. Covey back to pass. No, he hands up. Down to the 15, down to the 10, he might score. He does! That's Winningham for Brigham Young University. Winningham on a delayed handoff. That was a pretty good fake by Kelly. I thought he was going to throw it. Real good ball handle on that one. He really set up the draw well. Kind of a roll draw. It looked like he was rolling hand back to Fred Winningham against the grain. Nice little draw, a trap on the inside on the offensive line, and great hole there. You're going to see the guard back off and, and uh, set up the block. And then uh, Fred Whittingham, once he gets going full speed ahead, he gets down to that five. Nobody's going to catch him. Nobody's going to bring him down. He's in for six. Whittingham's a good open field runner. Brigham Young leads 33-6 to six now with 10.03 to play. And they get it on two running plays, one by Covey, one by Whittingham. Here is uh, Kaufman to try the extra point. Thompson holding. It's down. The kick is good. He's perfect on his extra point attempts today. And with 10.03 to go in the football game, Brigham Young ups the lead over Texas to 34-6. to Coffin to kick off. Cougars out in front, 34-6 to against the University of Texas. I can imagine that many colleges in the country have a winning record against Texas. No, I would say not. I don't know. Texas doesn't get beat this bad very often. Now, we shouldn't say that, though, Jay. There's 10 minutes left. There's still time, but... Uh, you know, they came back last year when it looked like BYU had it locked up. That's right. The margin was a lot bigger than this, but they did come back. Here's Kaufman's kick. Fielded down around the 10, out to the 15, to the 20. Bumped around there, and now the uh, gang tackling him, him and swarm all over him near the 25-yard line. You know, Jay, we, we mentioned how quickly BYU has scored. Here's, here's their scoring drives, time-wise. The first one was 14 seconds, the first drive. The second one, 11 seconds. The third one was the interception return, so that didn't take any time. Uh, the, the field goal for the third was 2 minutes and 4 seconds. Touchdown pass was 2 minutes and 12 seconds. Then another field goal in a minute and 13. So uh, they have not taken more than 2 minutes and 12 seconds to score on any particular story, scoring drive today. That's called their don't-waste-any-time offense, I guess, huh? First down, Texas, Murdoch at quarterback from the 26-yard line. Looking to throw. Has some time. Lofts it downfield. Incomplete. Intended for Norris. Covered by Bergeson of Brigham Young. Bergeson came to BYU from Snow College, where he, uh, well, actually, he's a local boy. Played at Tempview High School. Went down to Snow, where he was a star defensive back. Served an LDS mission. And now he's playing at BYU in a starting role. Good job of coverage there. You could tell that uh, Mark Murdoch was a rookie freshman quarterback on that one. He took the snap. He watched Norris from the time he he got the snap, watched him all the way out of the backfield and threw the ball real late. Second and 10 for Texas from the 26. That's that wraparound handoff that BYU is not fooled at all this time. Lane as a quarterback, it appears to me that'd be a little difficult to uh, to handle effectively, but but it's worked. Tonight. It's a, it's a tough one. They, Dallas Cowboys used to do that all the time with Roger Staubach. They used to bring him back and he'd hand around to the back. You could see that they had a little bit of trouble on the replay. Uh, it's hard to get it around there. You have to have long arms to do that play. Chris Samuels, the ball carrier. Dwayne Johnson hit him first of all. Ty Detmer warming up on the sideline for Brigham Young University. The Cougars may go with their freshman quarterback. Here's Murdoch to pass again. 
zips it over the middle and it's incomplete. There were three Cougars there, one Texan, and the ball just went to shooting on through. It looked like uh, Stephen Clark was open for a moment. Troy Long covering, and now the punter comes back in. For Brigham Young, Mike O'Brien drops back to the 32-yard line and in to kick for the University of Texas is Alex Waits. Has the snap, and here's the punt. O'Brien signals fair catch and takes it at the 35-yard line. A little bit of an acting job there by Waits, but a Cougar was blocked into him. The official does not drop the, the flag, and right now there's nine minutes left of the ball game. Brigham Young University with the football. Uh, another injury note, Craig Patterson who broke his hand last week against Wyoming has strained his left to knee and will not be back in the game tonight. Ty Detmer in at quarterback for Brigham Young. Ty, a great prospect. He's a freshman from San Antonio, Texas player of the year in high school. Played in his first college game last week against Wyoming. Running play on the first down, Mike O'Brien. O'Brien met at the line of scrimmage, no game. Detmer uh, came in when Covey was injured against uh, Wyoming and struggled, but I was over to the game watching the sidelines. This Correction, is a young man Michael who does Bryan, not quit. He just two. bounced back and just kept coming back at the Cowboys. He's got a lot of confidence, and you know, he had a real rough game last week. Rocky Wyoming Allen put a lot of pressure on him. He's still Baltimore. confident. He knows he can get the job done, and he wants to be out there playing. Rocky Gain Allen yard, made the stop play. in the last play. Gain of a yard, make it second and nine. So Detmer is a redshirt freshman and from Texas. Sends his tight end in motion. That's Smith. Detmer back to throw. Pretty good protection. Completes it. To O'Brien down the sidelines, 50, 45, down to the 40, down to the 35. Cuts into the middle, to the 30, still on his feet. At the 25, dances away to the 23-yard line. Fine run after the catch by... Now was it O'Brien or was it Salido? It, it was O'Brien. Okay, O'Brien. Looked like he was returning a punt there. He was putting on his punt return moves. Nice catch. The, weak, uh, the strong side linebacker for Texas uh, made a big mistake on that one. He came... He was supposed to have man-to-man -man coverage on Mike O'Brien, and he came on the rush. There was nobody back there to cover O'Brien. You can see in the replay here, the guy on the top of your screen uh, was supposed to take him, and he came in and blitzed. You can see he's the one that hits Detmer, but nobody out there to cover O'Brien. Detmer gets the ball off, and O'Brien's all by himself. So there's 10, 20, 25. Back in the middle, 30, 35. He gained around 40 yards in that. Here's Detmer to throw again. No, wait, he fakes it. He faked it and handed it off into the middle. My mistake. That is Salido carrying the ball that time. 7.38. Jake, uh, Jay Jinkless made the tackle. Boy, every, every, every time BYU throws the ball, it seems either, it's either an incomplete or a big play. That's about right. Smith is in a tight end for Brigham Young. Chris Smith, a big sophomore, transferred from Arizona. He's a good football player. Detmer back to throw. Gets it off, and it is incomplete. He had to throw it because uh, he was looking right into uh, was a defensive end right on top of him. Ty made a good read on that particular play. He knew that there was a blitz coming. He looked to go back to the wide receiver going where the free safety had left on the blitz, um, but he just couldn't put the ball on the receiver. But a good mentally, he, he performed very well on that one. Just couldn't get the ball on the receiver. John Powell for Texas there defensively. The Cougars have third and eight. <clears throat> from the Texas 20-yard line. Two men wide to the right for Brigham Young, two setbacks. Detmer looking to pass, does pass. It's caught at the 10, at the five, and touchdown, Cutler. Cutler kind of picked his way downfield after he caught the ball, but boy, he was wide open when he caught it. You know, Jay, again, Texas is man-to-man. -man. They've run that as a steady diet the entire game. Cutler broke to the inside. The, res the, the guy thought he had good coverage on him. He planted his foot and broke back to the outside. You won't be able to see the route here, but you'll see Ty Detmer dropping back. Cutler will be cutting to the inside, plant his foot, and then go back to the outside. The guy is supposed to be covering him. You saw him on his knee there, just on the left side of the screen. Good move on his route, and then at the end, just picked his way down and used his blocker to get into the end zone. Here's another view of it from the, from the ground. See him picking his way along, using the blocker down there in the end zone to, to get into the end zone. 
Hoffman trying the extra point, and again it's good for Brigham Young University. And so with seven minutes left to go, BYU leads Texas 41 to six, and Ty Detmer, who was a Texas Longhorn fan as a high school uh, student in Texas, has just thrown a TD pass against uh, the Texans. He also threw one last week against Wyoming to Cutler. Again, Jay, another a real quick scoring drive. That one took one minute and one second. BYU to kick off again to the uh, Texas Longhorns. It's been a long game. Probably about three and a half hours old now. Yeah, we're going on. Th this will be a, a four hour deal. So Brigham Young University leading 41 to 6 with about seven minutes left to play in the football game. And Kaufman will kick off once again. Both teams uh, using the opportunity in this situation of the game now to uh, give some other young men a chance to play. I don't think Texas has been beaten this bad. Well, Oklahoma beat them pretty badly last year, but uh, they don't get beaten this badly very often. Well, they've been handled uh, pretty well by the BYU defense. Let's see. Uh, I looked last year. Yeah, Oklahoma beat them 44 to nine last year, which is one of the games where they did not score a touchdown. Here's the kickoff. This one is deep into the end zone. No return. Texas with the football, first and ten of their own 20. And we're kind of playing out the string right now. That's the last scoring drive we talked about. Detmer's pass to Cutler. Cooper scored on the first play of the game today when Sean Covey scored an 80-yard pass play to Doman, his uh, freshman wide receiver, and they uh, have led the entire game. Murdoch at quarterback. Quick out, batted in the air, juggled, intercepted by Rocky Beagle, a freshman, and he's knocked out of bounds. And that was an unusual play. It looked like a volleyball match for a moment. The ball was knocked in the air, I think at the line of scrimmage. Then a Cougar defensive man had it. It was knocked away from him and right into the hands of Beagle. He's a freshman and certainly a star of the future. That's a third interception for BYU in this game. Let's look on the replay, see who got a hand on it on the line of scrimmage. I don't know, it looked like it could have been Tim Clark there or it may have been uh, uh, the nose tackle. And uh, Mitchell gets a hand on it, knocks it up in the air, and then Beagle comes over to pick it up. It was like a volleyball match there. Good awareness by, by uh, the young linebacker. Brigham Young with the football then. See the line of scrimmage is the Texas 14-yard line. Ty Detmer at quarterback. Detmer on a running play to Salido, slips through the middle and inside the 15-yard line. Before he's pulled down. Tyler Anderson in as a wide receiver for BYU. Jeff Higgins. And also Andy Boyce comes into the game. Andy's been playing quite well for the Cougars in practice. Andy's a good receiver. He's going to be a good one. Second down for the Cougars. Seven yards for a first down. They're on the Texas, well, about the 12-yard line. Detmer comes up to the line of scrimmage, sees time about to run out of that uh, time uh, play clock, so he calls timeout. We have six minutes and 12 seconds left to play, and Brigham Young leads 41 to 6. Brigham Young University, second unit quarterback uh, Ty Detmer at the helm right now, has second and eight inside the 15 yard line after an interception. Smith goes in motion. There's a pitch back to a new man in the game. He busts inside the 15 down to the three yard line. So the Cougars. Is that Eric Mortensen? Boy, he showed some good speed that on that one, didn't he, Jay? Good moves by Eric. He got through the line and turned on the wheels, and boy, he was really going. He showed me some good speed on that one. Good blocking up front by the offensive line. Made a good hole. But there's a flag down, and BYU is going to be called with an illegal motion play. What happened was the motion man started toward the line of scrimmage before the snap of the ball. A second down. And of course the uh, Texans take the penalty. 
Cougars still with the football. About six minutes to go in the ball game. It is now second and 13 on the 17 yard line. Smith in motion. Detmer gives him the draw. <laughs> and he ran into about everybody that time. That's Sam Tia Tia. Is from Hawaii. Uh, was here last year, but was a Proposition 48 young man, so was unable to, couldn't play last year. But they say he's a good running back. It's going to go back. Eric Tackle, Mortensen is a freshman from Lancaster, California, David who uh, redshirted last year due to an injury. Yeah, number 42, yeah, let's John check uh, Tia Tia, who carried at that time, 215 pound junior from Honolulu. Missed the 86 year on Proposition 48, and last year played with the J uh, Junior Varsity. Here's a pitch back to the right side. Knocked out of bounds at the 15 yard line is Mortensen. Bubba Moffat knocked him out. Mortensen played uh, football and track. He was a league sprint champion, champion in fact, in track in California. You can tell he's got good speed, yeah. Cougars have fourth and 11 right now. I'm going to go for it here. On the 16 yard line, with five minutes left to play in the ball game. Detmer sends Smith in motion. Run, 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 run. Turns the corner to the left side, has some running room. He's down to the 10, he's down to the 5, and he scores! How about that? We uh, were able to see he does have a set of wheels. He's got some good speed, got good balance, too. Boy, I'm really impressed with the young, run, young running back. You know, he played off a block, he waited and then bounced off his own man and turned the corner and scored. Good job of blocking. He sprung him to the outside and able to turn the corner. He's got great speed, Jay. 47 to 6, the score. Brigham Young leading Texas. And you know, the Texans came up here. They uh, sort of smarted over that loss on their home field last year to BYU. They wanted to win this game. And the bad thing for them, BYU's not in the schedule in the years ahead. No, no chance to get even later on. Not for a while. Here's the extra point attempt by Kaufman. Drives it up there and he missed it. In fact, he kicked a knuckleball that time. Kind of hooked it to the left. You see the replay of, uh, of that uh, score by Morton. You see, get the ball. And he's going to kind of cut inside of the contain man and set up his block. And then he turns to the outside. And then he can, once he turns the corner, he turns on that great speed of his. It just goes for the corner of the end zone. Just a nice run. Maintained his balance for about eight yards there at the end of the run. So Brigham Young leads 47 to 6 now with 4.54 to play in the football game. Just under five minutes to go, and uh, Blaine, you've talked about this throughout the game. There wouldn't be much time on that drive either. There's a, an interesting stat. Worst loss since 1956 against Oklahoma. Boy. That's a long time back, and that's a great team to lose to. BYU really doing a job tonight. Kaufman to kick off for Brigham Young. Here's the kick. He drives it out of the end zone. No return. Another interesting stat, Jay. This is the most points scored by a BYU team since the opening game in 1986 against Utah State when they won 52 to nothing. Well, both teams back on the field as we try to play out the final five minutes. It was a, uh, what, just under two minutes on that scoring drive. Set up by the interception by a freshman, Beagle. The touchdown by Mortensen, a freshman. Murdoch at quarterback. The rush is on. He's chased out of the pocket, throws it, completes it to the 25-yard line. Ted Dawson making the stop for Brigham Young. Five-yard gain. Completed the pass that time to number 29, Eric Williams, tailback. You know, at this point in the game, uh, uh, Jay, a, a team like Texas trying to regroup, trying to get something together, trying to put a drive together so they go off on a positive note to next week. Second and five for the Texans. Pitch back to Williams, trying to turn the corner for the first down. I think he has it. He's knocked out of bounds up around the 30-yard line. Ted Dawson again for BYU, bouncing him out of bounds. You know, we've had a lot of the crowd stay for this particular game. Sure, the game, you know, really at this point out of reach, I would say. We can safely say that. 
But uh, yeah, they're staying around. I'd like to see some of the young players, see what they have to look forward to in the future. And uh, obviously the young players giving them a good show here at the end of the game. A lot of the fans, as we often do, arrive to the game this evening, a few minutes after it started. Most of them, a lot of them are staying tonight. There's a good crowd still in hand. It was a first down for Texas to the 31 yard line. Murdoch to pass. Murdoch sets, throws it over the middle. Nice catch by Jones at the 46 yard line. It's a little bit in back of him. He had to go back and get it, so he went off his feet to catch it and couldn't get any more yardage out of it. Might be exciting for this crowd to see uh, Tony Jones grab one and turn on the afterburners once. How much do you think uh, Texas miss, missed Eric Metcalf tonight, Jay? I don't know. Do you want to say 41 points? Uh, I don't. I don't <laughs> think it would make that much of a difference. No, you know, they, they really didn't have a running game tonight. I think you would have added to that, but but one man doesn't make up that much difference. No, but they certainly did miss him. He's a great athlete. We saw him play last year, and it made a lot of difference. Back to throw is Murdoch. A lot of time, throws and misses his man. It's an incomplete pass. You know, Murdoch really getting good time to throw here the last few plays, but uh, the BYU secondary doing an excellent job of coverage. Beagle and Dawson covering a couple linebackers, young linebackers for BYU. Dawson's a sophomore and a second unit man. Beagle's a freshman and second unit. Three and a half left in the football game. One week from Saturday, right back here at Cougar Stadium, the Cougars and the UTEP Miners in an important league game. Bootlegs it, still has the football. Didn't fool uh, too many of the Cougars, however, but still gains three or four yards. Our dog on a Randy on the left side. Slayton from BYU got to him. Slayton, I believe, is also Randy in Texas. Slayton, number 53. And Bud Orr, number 93. Now, now the, he's, like, he's from Austin, Austin, Texas. Now the BYU fans singing uh, na 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 hey 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 goodbye to the Texas team. Murdoch to pass, flips it intercepted at the 35, 40, and slips and goes down to the 42-yard line, and another interception. That's Kirk Davis. Kirk Davis grabs one out there, and there are a lot of people that are happy to see Kirk Davis on the field this year. We don't want to overplay that particular thing, but you remember last year, the problems he went through involving cancer, and he conquered it, and he's back on the football field. On that play, they had Jones running up the sideline. He was covered very, very well. Free safety was coming over to help, and uh, Davis had good coverage and made the play. Third interception for Brigham Young. First down, the Cougars on their own 41-yard line. We've got a new quarterback in. This is Hodge. He's the freshman from Pocatello. He hands off up the middle for a gain of a couple of yards. This young man played in the uh, JV game last week against Snow College and passed for nearly 300 yards. He's a good football player. I was watching him warm up before the game, and he has a, a real strong arm, very accurate thrower. 6'4", 195 freshman, lettered in football and basketball, all conference in football. There you see, last year, uh, Texas had eight turnovers against BYU, and uh, turning the ball over again, that's killing him again this, this, this year in 88. So BYU playing their third quarter of the game, quarterback of the game, that is. Second down and seven. Again, the running play right up the middle. Pretty good game to the 50-yard line. That's Alima Harrington now in as a running back for Brigham Young. Harrington, a senior from Honolulu. Plays a lot on the special teams. He's a great special teams player. Makes a lot of tackles. And uh, good hard runner. Govan made the tackle for Texas. Brigham Young with the football. Hodge spells his name H-O-G-E, but it's pronounced Hodge. Third down, a yard to go for BYU. Off to the left side, they don't get the yardage for the first down. Well, that's Stacy Corley, who's now in as a running back. You know, BYU is very deep with running backs this year. They have a lot of good, talented running backs, a lot of young running backs, and uh, a good future to look forward to. David McAdoo. Yeah, 
made the uh, tackle. So BYU is going to punt it with fourth down in the yard to go at midfield. They tried to run a little bit of a cross buck misdirection play and pulled the backside guard out in front of them, but uh, the guard couldn't block two men and uh, Corley unable to cut it up and get the first down on that one. Thompson to punt again for BYU. Hangs it up there, kicking towards the corner. Fair catch the signal. But BYU down it before it goes into the end zone. They do. Nice punt by Thompson. So Texas will take over first and ten on their own two-yard line with only 40 seconds left to play in a ball game. After all that good field position they had, boy, the last few times they've really been back in their own territory. Murdoch at quarterback, getting some experience. Pitches back, has to come back into the middle, gains to the seven-yard line. Carrying is uh, Pat Wilson. You want to go? Chad Moffat in the stop. Kenny, you want to go? It's the most passing yards. Most passing yards ever given up by Texas. 402 yards today, all on big plays. Time running out. About 10 seconds left in the ball game. Maybe the last play of the game. That's Wilson coming wide to the right side. And they knock him out of bounds at the 12-yard line with two seconds left to play in the football game. So they'll get another cha uh, chance. Ryan Mitchell for BYU, freshman, and Courtney Rogers combining to make the stop. It's a first down gain, puts the ball out to the 13-yard line, where Texas will have one more go at that BYU defense. Remember Texas El Paso here. One week from Saturday, a very important league game for BYU. Scholarship funds of BYU. John Covey and Rodney Rice. They go right up the middle with this particular play, and uh, Rocky Beagle makes a stop for Brigham Young, and that does it. The game ends with a final score, Brigham Young University 47, and the University of Texas has six.